Yes. Right. Perfect. Right, those who are present here in the beginning of the webinar, as I read out the names, Sandhya, Shwab, Sharad, Abhi, Dr. Chaitanya, Pratiksha, Shahid, Mamta, Akimali, Siksha Pandey, Dr. Anup, Vijendra Kumar Yadav, Supriya Sudhakar Reddy, Chella. Bas. So, these are the people who are going to be calculated. Okay. So, what we are going to calculate? Let's see. And, uh, right. So, I begin the recording. Or should I record? Okay. No problem. Right. It's always, uh, as you can see, the what I have kept as a filter and then as a background, I will start with that and let's see how it goes. <clears throat> it's the channel Academy of Orthopedic Manual Physical Therapist. And we have a program now on the lecture come interactive e-certificate masterclass webinar dedicated to the broadest topic ever that anyone can imagine. And most importantly, to clarify the widest spectrum of queries and doubts of the participants. Whenever we think of participants and about learning, when it comes to AYMPT, it is always about Ritu Sani Ma'am, who's been the leader in learning by being a participant in all the courses of the AYMPT in the history of lockdown for the past two and a half years. She never missed a single course. I had the privilege to be her instructor. She might say, I had the honor to have Sarah as my teacher, but Remember that every teacher requires a very, very sincere student. Without the learner, there is no kind of a teacher. There is no role for a teacher. Especially, teacher is if, for example, it is like the uh, watchman, the security, the uh, traffic police. Okay. And uh, the destination, of course, is excellence. Everybody has to get better. Light is the knowledge. So when we open our eyes, we see the light. If we keep our eyes closed, even in daytime, it appears as if it is the night. So learner has the control whether to keep the eyes open or eyes closed. And as you are opening your eyes, the first thing what you see, for example, you see my screen. Some people may watch the knobs which are there on my right. Some people might watch the background, uh, the suspension bridge from San Francisco. Or some others may be bothered about the wooden frame of the TV, the vintage television sets. Very few might be focusing to me or to my lips to see that what words I am talking. Because sometimes when people talk, you have to read your the other person's lips, what is called as the eye-to-eye -eye contact. Uh, for clinicians, you will understand this importance or even as every one of you as a patient, when you consult a doctor, when you consult a physician, if the physician is looking at your face, he's looking at your eye when he's talking, you will feel that you are given the importance. If the doctor is talking to the nurse, or is looking at the part, he's looking at your part. Okay, you have a back pain, you have a knee pain. The physician is looking at the knee. At the same time, he's asking you a question. He's not looking at you. Hardly you will open up to share your history. So remember one thing, when it comes to knowledge, the student's eye contact with the teacher is very important. When it comes to practice, 
the therapist's eye contact with the patient is very important. And when it comes to team management, sometimes you may be a principal and you have faculty, or you are a owner of a clinic and you have physios working under you. Whenever you have a meeting, please understand that each and every one of, one of the meeting member, you should look at their eye to eye and convey the message. That is the skill of a successful speaker. Even in a conference, we have participants like 1000 plus participants. The person stands on the stage, but you will find some people are exceptional speakers. They are able to hold all the thousand people together. And you will see the same in online learning also. Every people have their own style of uh, sharing the information okay, in an online forum. So we are experimenting in AYMPT to improve ourselves, the methods of instruction, the experiences, what the participants can have in order to enhance their learning experience. And most importantly, how to be not on par with the international standards, because we never think international standards are high and Indian standards are low. We aim at how to be beyond the international standards. So that is what is AYMPT. So updated evidence or be it newly innovatively created courses, all the courses have been introduced and launched by AYMPT in its own style. So every content what is available everywhere, Maitland's concept, but the Maitland concept elsewhere versus Maitland concept in AYMPT, definitely you will find that the applicability on patients is easier and better and more clearer the way it is instructed in AOMPT. Yes, of course, I am blowing my own trumpet when I say AOMPT is the best. But most importantly, if I don't blow my trumpet, whom else can I expect that they will blow my trumpet? So I should have the responsibility to be proud of the best work what we do. One such greatest inspiration is to have the core committee members and also those who have completed the extended fellowship programs of the AOMPT, like Ritu Ma'am, taking webinars and case studies. And of course, she is also a certified instructor. Other than me, she is the only certified instructor in the AOMPT. She is based from Delhi and she is a clinical physical therapist. More importantly, a person who can connect with the participants of every level and ensures that she wants to give the simplified knowledge for everybody. So Madam volunteered and said that I will take a presentation and she prepared a wonderful lecture presentation which we are all going to see now. The moment Madam starts sharing the screen and goes ahead with her presentation. What I request all the participants to be noting is now itself you can type your questions on the Zoom chat so that your question stays here. And whenever her presentation is over, completed, we will be taking up those points for the interaction. We are expecting an extended session because her PowerPoint uh, slides are definitely comprehensive. It is much more, it is concentrating on musculoskeletal disorders. It is also emphasizing on manual therapy. So, of course, you would have seen the study materials what I shared in the webinar group, the PDF and also the videos. Make sure that at your leisure, at least watch them once, the videos at least. PDF, it's important for postgraduates and PhD or teaching faculties. Do not miss the information. And of course, here, interaction is for a direct clarification, a direct interactive experience. So make sure to keep putting your questions. And the first question here will be the first person will be allowed the opportunity to ask on the screen. Asking questions on the chat fulfills the 50 percentage of the criteria. But asking us directly verbally on the screen fulfills and completes the 100 percentage of the criteria for the e-certificate of not attendance 
AYMPT always gives the certificates like e certificate of participation. That is more valuable than the certificate of attendance. And of course, the certificate courses which we are having, the higher level advanced training, we always give certificate of completion or certificate of appreciation. Okay, depends on the levels of the courses. We ensure that the nomenclature for even for a certificate matches and is beyond the global standards of quality. So wishing all the participants the best of the Saturday evening on 30th July 2022, as we are about to see Ritu ma'am taking her lecture presentation on the musculoskeletal disorders and manual therapy and introduction, right? So we yes, move sir. On. Yes, sir. I'm going to share my screen. You're able to share the screen? Yes, once a moment. You're able to share the screen, ma'am? Yes, sir. Yes, the desktop window view. Perfect. Slideshow, right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I'm ready, sir. Start, sir. I already said that you can start. I don't know okay. why. Okay, uh, okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. So today I am going uh, for the presentation about the musculoskeletal disorder uh, because uh, this is the term which is, uh, I think, uh, or I will say that this is a very uh, comfortable term which all the physiotherapists normally use because they know because we are the therapist, we are the person who are giving the movement. But what movement we are going to give the patient if they are not having a they are having in a dysfunction of their skeletal problem or that related problem to the muscles because uh, sometimes we see that the patient is having uh, the primary problem is start with the either with the genital problem the, the some problems are the musculoskeletal problem are genital means genital when which they carry from their because of their gene their hereditary problems and some are the developmental which or they by the birth after their birth or in their development age they are struggling with that dysfunction. So these are the musculoskeletal uh, disorders which we uh, normally see because in the, because of this dysfunction, uh, the health suffers and the uh, in the average the patient feel the fatigue, discomfort, pain, and the loss of the function because they are not able to perform their activity because of pain, discomfort, and fatigue. So what are these? Because uh, when we talk about the orthopedicians and we uh, go, the patient goes to the orthopedician. They just write that your uh, dysfunction is related to your muscles. Your dysfunction is related to your nerve. Your dysfunction is related to your uh, skeletal or the fascia. Because there are, when we talk about human being, we cannot say only that the patient is having a problem with the single joint problem. Because if their joint is in a problem, so you, we can easily understand that their surrounding structures, either the nerve, either the muscles, ligaments, tendons, they, that all will be going in a dysfunction. So we have to take that proper evaluation, how we can understand this musculoskeletal disorders, which we can divide into the upper limb disorders, lower limb, and in the spine also. So there are so many uh, common terms, which as a physiotherapist, we know easily, and that is very uh, known for, because in our daily life, we treat in our clinical practice, we see this type of patient like Normally for the, if I will talk about the shoulders, so the rotator cuff, tendonitis, frozen shoulder, and if I will talk about the elbow, golfer elbow, tennis elbow, and the wrist dysfunction, deformities in uh, uh, hand, the fingers, the carpal tunnel syndrome, and if I will talk about that there is a thoracic outlet syndrome that is also completely in that we can say that the nerve plays a very major role in uh, with the related structure of uh, either the facet joints, either the disc, like the open dysfunction or the closed dysfunction where the 
uh, that this, this uh, articular structure give that dysfunction to the nerves and if they are not uh, going in their proper way so it will affect the other working of their muscular muscle also because their uh, the open dysfunction and the closed dysfunction we knows very well that the closed the internal articular part or the open is the muscular part in between the nerve plays a major role if they are in a dysfunction how they will affect each other and there is a bursitis because we know in all of our body there are some joints where there is a bursa if that bursa got inflammation or there there is a inflammation in the bursa then the bursitis comes either the hip joint or the uh, shoulder joint we see that and in the knee joint that is a very common uh, the bursitis is a very common because of that the patient feel in the knee the movement stuck their knee stuck and they are not able to walk also so there is a patellar tendonitis and if we talk about the ankle and foot there is also the agilis tendinopathy at plantar fasciitis because we know that the patient with the plantar heel how they feel they are not able to keep their first step on the uh, the uh, floor so that time they feel unable so this is uh, the role where we can but uh, while treating the plantar fasciitis we can not only say that we will treat the the bony structure because there is not only the bony structure will go in the dysfunction related to the the fascia that will also go in a dysfunction or as well as the muscle which are supplying either by the layer by layer on the foot the superficial layer first layer second layer according to that their uh, the flexor their extensor and the retinaculum all that plays a very major role in the musculoskeletal disorder so we will see these terms these dysfunction term by term so and we can easily understand that how the patient feel dysfunction and for that how we can uh, as a aompt from where i am learning that how easily we can treat this function according to their evaluation that what type of dysfunction is patient is having according to the component we will add and we will give our better treatment the manual therapy for that particular dysfunction in this the overview i have given you that how we can uh, correlate that all these dysfunct disorders and uh, the prominent causes of musculoskeletal disorder work related because sometimes the the workplace with the patient people who do their work at that place environment and their work style gives the deformity and the dysfunction and the disorder in their body so that is also work related musculoskeletal disorder what are their symptoms and the diagnosis the treatments and how we can prevent and with the manual therapy so understanding of musculoskeletal disorder and how we can avoid them so it is uh, the very uh, major term for a physiotherapist so we should not avoid any single symptom while evaluating from starting to uh, the last by taking the history evaluation assessment so it is very important to take the teach them that they can explain in a better way their problem so that we can treat in a better way so uh, if we think that only the accidents and the impacts alone can can cause the injury to the human body then that is there is a no base of this term because sometimes the repetitive stress overuse of our body part could also span the disability to our body so you can say that the injuries to the muscle and the skeletal system known as the musculoskeletal disorder so for this we can define like this also that the injuries or impairment of the musculoskeletal system of human body like muscles nerves tendons ligaments spinal discs and the blood vessel they all are included in musculoskeletal disorder so if i will go to treat a particular area i cannot miss all the surrounding structure because i can never say that which one is in a tightness which one can which one is the that part is that in a crying position so how i can evaluate and i will treat that particular part according to the patient's symptoms what is the priority and the what is the first symptom and what part is the first starting the pain and what is the last so according to sequence i will treat my patient and check their all dysfunction so what are the common musculoskeletal disorder we all know about them but uh, for this topic it is mandatory to revise all these things so that we can keep our mind that when we are going to treat our patient in which category we are uh, keeping this disorder either in the developmental or the 
the current situation according to the current situation like posture work related or there is a heredity of these uh, dysfunctions so that is also first categorized then we can start our treatment like the arthritis it is a very well known term for all the uh, physiotherapists where the wear and tearing swelling pain infection tenderness in the joint that are that these are the symptoms of that particular we can distinguish as a rheumatoid arthritis osteoarthritis and the psoriatic arthritis these diseases because of the degenerative changes uh, related changes so we can categorize in that that these, these are the degenerative changes uh, in the category in this also we can see that when how the normal bone behave and after the if there is a patient is having a osteoporosis it term itself is uh, telling that porosis means the porous now the bone has more pores so that the due to the loss of muscle tissue there are sometimes a deficiency of vitamins and there are hormonal changes because of that that bones become weak and brittle so they can easily the uh, the patient is having a tendency to get uh, fast fractured so these are the thing because of that osteoporosis the patient is feeling fatigue they are not able to perform their activity because they have a fear of fall if i will fall uh, my bone uh, my bone will break so i will not be able to do my proper activity so this is the or the physical the psychological criteria of the patient who has having a osteoporosis they always live their life in a fear of fall and if i will talk about the ankylosing spondylitis so this is also a very major uh, dysfunction the musculoskeletal disorder where the reduction of flexibility patient is not uh, the flexibility is very less so they are uh, not able to do their proper uh, positioning either the extension flexion they feel fear in that also because of the loss of the flexibility in which the spine bend forward so this is also a kind of inflammatory disease mainly uh, we can categorize that men's are more uh, in men's we can see more than the women's So in this, you know all about that. The how the normal joint appears, how the osteoarthritis joint you can see it, and the rheumatoid arthritis you can also see. And in this also, uh, then hand that how the deformities of because of the rheumatoid arthritis, how the uh, the deformities of uh, fingers in the uh, hands, the chain, the swan, the claw, and the there are so many deformities of hand which we can easily know that the what is the reason of. Uh, this deformity either this is the osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis this is the annular tear this is also a very important uh, a criteria to treat the patient because sometimes uh, the ligaments connecting to the vertebra and the disc weaken and tear the annulus fibers because we know the structure of the disc where is the annulus and where is the nucleus pulposus so how these uh, because there is a there is a annular rings so if it there is a tearing in it will come so definitely it will open the place for the nucleus pulposus it will come out so like this disc herniation when the jelly like disc nucleus protrudes through the tear in the annulus of the spine so it dislocate the disc affects the spinal cord that in you can easily say in the stages if that patient is having a, a normal disc there is a no problem if there is a degeneration little bit the patient will felt feeling the stiffness the morning stiffness it will move with the movement also but if there is a prolapse how the nucleus pulposus uh, will come out is there is a extrusion and if there is a sequestration so it is all that we can easily think that these are the dysfunction which is related to the muscle to the skeletal or skeletal to the muscle we cannot different uh, we cannot divide into the two parts because they both if there is a disc herniation or there is a annular tear then naturally they will affect the muscles which are outside of that particular articular structure they will give them a compression they will give them a tightness sometimes there is a shortening because of that the patient will feel uh, that they are uh, having a pain in a particular direction i some patient feel because of their according to the uh, the prolapse of uh, anterior or posterior the prolapse according to that the patient feel uncomfortable in Uh, extension and flexion and this is also a very common thing which we see that the carpal tunnel syndrome cubital tunnel syndrome and the radial tunnel syndrome in which then the, the nerves the medial nerve and the ulnar nerve and the radial nerve are pinched while passing through the arm and wrist they will cause carpal cubital and radial syndromes respectively so in this the patient feel the numbness or tingling in the arm elbow and hand 
but i will add on in this one thing one thing which is very important to understand that uh, we cannot say that the only the nerve which is pinched is going to be in a compression because of that patient is uh, uh, feeling the tingling in the arm elbow and hand but i will add on in that i will not forget the structure from where the the nerve is passing through so i i cannot miss that structure also because if there is a i will talk about the uh, the patient is having a pain in a wrist so i will say that is there is a carpal tunnel syndrome so there is a profundus and the superficial they will because there is a tunnel in which that median nerve is going to pass but if their area which in this tunnel they are passing their articular structure which are also and the muscular structure like superficial and profundus if they are also getting inflamed and they will not give, give proper way to the nerve so it will get the compression to that nerve so i will not treat only that particular nerve to get to release the compression i have give the the mobilization to particular area the carpal bones also i will treat that bones also i will give the myofascial release to particular that muscles also so there are so many uh, techniques which we can add because in uh, uh, previously before joining the ampt we just think that yes this is a carpal tunnel syndrome so i have to give the uh, treatment for the median nerve but now i am able to understand that why the patient are not getting the uh, better uh, to better because of that we were not treating the structure which are also related to that particular area either i will talk about the Uh, cubital tunnel syndrome or the carpal tunnel syndrome or the radial uh, uh, tunnel syndrome so i have to check all that particular articular structure and the myofascial structure also for treating because i know that the radial nerve which is for the supination so there is a supinator syndrome also comes so we have to check that particular that radial nerve pathway all along the course of nerve which muscles are there they are playing a very major role or if i will talk about the cubital tunnel syndrome i cannot miss there is a olecranon process i can not not forget that there is a bursa also the fat pet so that these are the thing which uh, when we learn it properly then we are able to differentiate that yes i am not treating only the median nerve ulnar nerve and radial nerve i am i am treating the structures which are correlated with that particular nerve if i will talk about the tendinitis or the uh, because of that in uh, if i will talk about the foot so that due to the repetitive stress tear or degeneration can occur in the tendon aging and overuse make the tendons less flexible and weak when the tendons are affected they will react with the inflammation and they will result in a severe pain according to that in this also we can see in this picture if this there is a tendinitis It, it means there is a inflammation in particular this tendon so it will give the pressure to that particular bone also that the bone will not feel comfortable because of that pressure so we have to completely treat that particular structure not the tendonitis i am going to just i am keeping the tens or the ift or the ultrasonic i have to treat this structure also and i have to treat that the fascia which is going there also or i have to treat that which muscles are related to that particular extensor or flexors of my foot i have to treat them also so this is the thing which i want to add on because and sometimes if we are not able to uh, treat the the proximal part we have to treat the distal part also like we know that the peroneus brevis peroneus longus that is also coming in inserting in uh, in this part so i have to release that i have to release the gastrocnemius also i have to check the soleus also according to the dorsiflexion and the plantar flexion i have to check all these things so i will not forget to add all these things also and if we are moving toward the rotator cuff injuries that is also as a clinical practice we see more patient uh, for the rotator cuff injuries frozen shoulder shoulder impingement instability of shoulder so there are so many things so we can uh, take in it into the musculoskeletal disorder which we can treat because that rotator cuff because our uh, shoulder it completely works on the the mainly the muscles part plays a very major role because they are giving the working they are giving the stability that they are holding that part particular glenohumeral joint so they are giving the stability to that joint by catching them either with the if we will keep the fingers like so because of that with the scapula holding behind and with that 
there is a the rotator cuff three muscles are which are going in the behind and the one is in the front which we all know that how the sub supra spinatus infra spinatus teres minor how they hold the our glenohumeral joint and give the stability if there is a tearing in one muscle so their direction of work will disturb either the internal rotation external rotation that will our abduction adduction extension we know all that in which uh, coordination they all rotator cuff muscle work so if they are not uh, are in a stable position we have to stabilize them also because it is very important uh, to give them stabilization so that they can work in a multi direction because then if i will move my arm the all muscles are going in a work either the according to dominant hand or the non dominant hand i can know that which is going in for the internal rotation and then my dominant hand will going for the external rotation so what dysfunction my patient is having i have to differentiate according to their bony structure or the muscles or according to that i will provide my treatment and this is also a very common the thoracic outlet syndrome which we all as a physiotherapist we know that how it is situated between the collar bone and the, there is a first rib also how these uh, the arteries and the nerves arteries and veins they are they all are passing through so this is a very important uh, musculoskeletal disorder because in this articular structure are also involved and in this the myofascial structure are also involved and simultaneously i will say there is a venous system arterial system lymphatic system everything is involved in this thoracic outlet syndrome so this is the combined picture of all these structure if there is a uh, the first rib if there is a cervical rib problem how i can evaluate it is also very important if there is a scalene the which the first lip breathing we use the scalene if they are at the tightening and shortening because of that there is a sternocleidomastoid if they are tight they will also create a dysfunction in that particular area and because of uh, the venous insufficiency if the patient is having a venous insufficiency that time also because uh, we know the thoracic outlet syndrome where the the all these things are coming out but there is a if i will talk about the venous system so that that is we know the thoracic inlet uh, syndrome because where the blood supply is coming back so that is the inlet or outlet we have to differentiate between also this so this is also a very because of this also the patient is feeling because in this neural part is also there the numbness and the finger grip patient feel a very uh, weakness and they they this compression of that thoracic outlet syndrome causing the pain and numbness in the upper limb it radiate, radiates according to the nerve along the course of particular nerves and this is the vertebral disorders we all know about that there is a normal uh, this is also related to because we are when we are talking about the vertebra uh, that this is completely uh, related to the musculoskeletal disorder in this we can see that there is a scoliosis the curvature is disturbed and is, if there is a lordosis and if there is a kyphosis so we know that the kyphosis curving because there are a curvature primary curvature which we uh, when we born we born with that curve, curve that is the kyphosis because uh, the the little baby is not able to uh, hold their neck so it means that curvature that is the lordosis it will come after some time when baby uh, no, when the body will get the balance of their vertebra so that time that lordosis will, will come but the kyphosis it comes with the because they be sit like in a slouching position like they cannot uh, up their head so this curvature the lordosis comes later on but the kyphosis come first uh, so if the uh, the some people because of their wrong posture they sit in a hunch back and like a buffalo hump and this they sit like a slouching posture so because of that their uh, kyphosis cause the osteoarthritis osteoporosis and other conditions also because of the patient feel pain in a middle or lower back because we know that if we talk about the thoracic spine the thoracic spine it is bridge in between the cervical region and the lumbar region and the uh, cervical region that is also lordosis and the lumbar spine that is also lordosis in between that the kyphosis is the thoracic spine so it is a bridge so if the patient is having a dysfunction in uh, cervical spine 
it will affect the thoracic also or if there is a dysfunction in a thoracic spine it will affect the uh, 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 cervical spine or as well as the lumbar spine because of their uh, the, the the muscle alignment of particular area how the myokinetic chain travel with all these spines so that also affect the working of that kyphosis and if there is a lumbar spine because this is a inward curve of the lumbar spine just above the buttocks a small degree of lordosis is normal but if it is like in a pregnancy the third trimester uh, the, because of that the load of abdomen the baby's uh, load when it comes then that time that uh, lordosis uh, becomes more because of that the body is going in a forward position that time this can uh, be okay but if this is a very normal and some people keep their hand on their back and that time they uh, stand so that time their lordosis become higher so if they regularly do this they of this habit so it will become the more lordosis and it will create the problem for two uh, thoracic spine also or as a scoliosis in the, the the problem in the sacrum also because that will also give the disturb the uh, sequence of the lord the, the curve of the sacrum also because we know that the sacrum and the lumbar spine movement uh, compensate with each other if one is goes in a extension other goes in a flexion so it is very natural uh, for the understanding that we cannot miss this thing that how thoracic lumbar uh, the curvature will change the functioning of other region also Yes, this is the, uh, if I will talk about the hand, so this is all the Duquerin tenosynovitis. This is also a very, very common uh, uh, musculoskeletal disorder, which we are normally, we see in our patient. Because uh, I will add on in this one point, uh, after the COVID, the students which were not going to school regularly, they were not using, the, the, their writing skills are very less because they are just attending the online classes and they were not making any written work not doing not making any notes after that i have seen uh, the two kids they are having the problem in their holding their pen or pencil they are not able to hold because of that the weakness of particular area of the thumb there they don't have a strength in their strength uh, the thumb so they are not able and they feel sometimes they feel tiredness while writing one or two page they are not able to write also so this is the, the pain which is coming in a wrist because of the inflamed tendon, which we know that if there is a swelling, the tendon sheath is swollen, it is inflamed, it will not give the proper, because the thumb is, the gripping is very less. The, the, so the capability of the uh, student or the who wants to write or who want to hold the thing, it will become a less. So this is also a very important dysfunction we can never miss when we treat the wrist. And this is also the tennis elbow, the lateral epicondylitis. It is very common for all the physiotherapists. I think they all uh, see the regularly, they see the patient because of that, uh, how. But in this also, I will add on that, don't treat only that you are treating that, yes, the elbow, the tennis elbow is in a inflammation and you will treat your patient according to that electronic modalities or uh, sometimes just... Uh, hot and cold uh, bath only you will uh, prescribe, but you cannot miss there also the articular structure, which are playing a very major role and the muscles which are in our hand, the in our wrist to hand, which muscles are going to travel either the flexors or the extensor, we cannot miss that structure also for treating the patient. And uh, this is the bursitis, which is also the bursa. We know that it is a sac-like structure. It's a pad-like structure, which gives the protection to that particular joint so that the friction of that part, the two joints not come more than whatever the required. So it, if it will, uh, uh, the bursas are not in a proper form. So it will, the fluids to reduce, it will, the friction, it ensure that joints, because it is giving the movement to the joint. So if there is an inflammation in bursa, so the joint cannot easily move. It, it, but this bursa, we can see in the different areas, like in the hip, it plays a very major role. In our shoulder, it is plays <clears throat> a very major role. And if I will talk about the inflamed bursa in the heel also, or oh, sorry, in the tennis, in the elbow area also, it plays a very major role.
and this is the uh, golfer elbow which uh, we cannot uh, like the tennis elbow we know that yes we as a physiotherapist we think that if there is a medial epicondyle we have to treat the golfer elbow if there is a lateral epicondyle there is a we have to treat that but because pre before joining the amt i was also uh, very much confused that if the patient is having a both side pain what i will do so i think uh, it is a very common question which comes in our mind that if the patient is having golfer elbow or tennis elbow both what will be my treatment but now it is very clear that first i will uh, see that what is the first and what is the second according to that i will treat or i will see that which structures are inflamed which structure are in a shortening either the muscular part or the articular part i have to treat that also so this is a very common the lateral epicondylgia or medial epicondylgia when we treat the elbow but we have to treat all that particular structure which are combined with that area so that we can give or we have so many that facial release how we can give them the myofascial release also if there sometimes there is a distortion of fascia also because this is there are some distortion which happens only on the area of particular that the joint so we have to see that if there is a facial uh, uh, dysfunction because of that particular distortion we have to treat that also simultaneously and this is hls tendinopathy which is also very common where the tendon inflamed so that sometimes there is a degeneration according to that the patient not able to keep their foot on the floor and they he is not able to do their particular if there is a sport person for some times they are if they are a runner so they get uh, inflammation in that particular uh, tendon so they are not able to perform their sports so they are worried about that how we can go fast on the field so it's a duty as a physiotherapist to give them a functional recovery fast so that they can start their play fast and the plantar fasciitis this we all know about this how the plantar fascia and the area of uh, pain uh, all around the plantar fascia and the heel bone that is also and the fibrous band of plantar fascia how we can treat if it is inflamed this is the developmental dysplasia of the hip that is also uh, because we know that there is a some uh, musculoskeletal uh, disorders are some are heredity and some are developmental in this also we can see that how the <clears throat> the neonates and children when the ball and socket joint of the hip fails to attach properly to the hip joint so in infants can be caused by congenital disorders multiple pregnancies breech delivery and other factors because sometimes Uh, i will add on in this uh, if there is a uh, when the baby born that time the delivery time also because of that uh, sometime uh, when the doctors uh, give some injections for the uh, they increase the pain that time also the delivery of if the patient, the baby's delivery is not a normal or sometimes they pull their head with the forceps because it is stuck in between the between the pelvic bone so that time this uh, uh, forcing of that also sometime causes the dysplasia and the the baby uh, is not uh, uh, after when the day the baby is come out or uh, when when they start their activity like in a sitting or walking that time we see that there is a some dysfunction in their hip alignment also so this is also a very uh, major cause which uh, we can never ignore of this and this is plantar digital neuritis also and this also how the jo metatarsalgia we know that how the like the carpal tunnel syndrome in a hand so in the tarsal tunnel syndrome in our foot plays a major role where the flexor retinacular ligament they get inflamed they are not they are getting compression so after that the patient uh, is not uh, feeling comfortable and they feel the foot pain and the cramping in the foot so it is also as we can say that there is a uh, motor neuroma or the in interdigital neuroma also we can say because of that there is a inflamed the nerve becomes inflamed so the patient feel numbness and tingling and pain in their foot also <clears throat> and this is also the tension neck syndrome very important because of online classes or musculoskeletal this is developmental because of habitual the poor posture the neck muscles gets the tension so because of that the shoulders and upper back and arms 
the pain radiates and the stretching of the arm and neck if we do the stretch we feel comfortable but it means that the tension which was creating on the neck posture it the pain is in a multiple way it is going through the muscles going to the nerves and there is a inflammation in particular area also so the sometimes patient feel uh, comfortable with the hot pack or cold pack but it is not a option that we can give them only this treatment because we have to treat properly that what is the cause of uh, their dysfunction because of the tension on the neck because we cannot forget that they are in the in all of our spine the either the facet joint either the disc they all sometimes they are getting the compression and the muscles related to the upper neck upper trapezius levator scapulae how they are become tight there is a trigger point trigger point we just not focus on just we are palpating on the spine and we said yes there, there is a some tightness and yes no we have to check the myofascial con component also if there is a trigger point we have to release that is there any <clears throat> because of that trigger point there is a some facial dysfunction we have to treat that also because we know that there are multiple layers superficial layer deep layer they all uh, in a sequence so we have so many things we can treat it like the urgents we can use the screw cupping we can use the isdm we can release the fascia we can if there is a addition by layer by layer we can use the screw cupping if there is a uh, laterally they are the muscles are in addition we can use the isdm so we have so many options so that we can treat it uh, in a particular way and sometimes the contracture that is also develop when the normally we see that because after the fractures and by keeping the limb in a one position the inelastic tissue makes it difficult to stretch and the area and the prevent normal movement so it is very important to check the contracture it occurs in the skin tissue and underneath the muscles tendon and the ligament surrounding the joint so they affect the range of motion because of that contraction when the cast is removed the patient range of motion uh, become less so sometimes with physiotherapist stuck that i am doing a right treatment or uh, that how i can increase the range of motion uh, uh, of a particular limb of my patient so it is also very important to see that the contracture and we have to check that how the the tightness of that particular fascia and how i can release this per muscles which are uh, suppose i want to uh, uh, give the wrist flexion or wrist extension so how i can release the fascia with the contraction of particular muscle activate the muscle and then i can release the fascia so this is all uh, we have to learn properly that because we are not able to uh, again uh, leave the patient with the hold, uh, hot and cold bath or the electronic modalities we have to see that how this range of motion will come uh, it will start like with the gliding also it will start one to four also or it will by releasing so i have to see that i have to treat the in the hair also the articular structure or i have to release the fascia or i have to give the nerve gliding so that the my patient can feel comfortable after the contraction or after the uh, removal of his or her cast contraction can be caused by any of the following like the brain and nervous system disorder such as cerebral palsy palsy or stroke we know that there is a if we will talk about the stroke these are there is a sometimes the patient is having a, a, a paralysis of spastic or the placid paralysis so how we have to understand about that what they are uh, because of that either the upper motor neuron are they in a dysfunction or lower motor neuron so according to that we can differentiate between the spastic and the placid and if we talk about the cerebral palsy the patient is having a spastic uh, the, the spastic paralysis type condition because there is a hyper uh, hyper con hyper contraction in the muscles the muscles in the even relaxed position they are contracting but if we will talk about the flaccid situation where the lower motor neuron which are not sending the information to the peripheral nerves that time the flaccidity comes so the patient uh, is the hypotonia comes and the tone is very less it, it is not uh, in, if you are moving passively that time also the tone will not come so it means this is a completely a flaccid stage or there is a hypotonia so that also cause the muscular dystrophy also because of that hypotonia because of that flaccid condition and sometime because of the nerve damage 
that is also a very major cause and reduced use of like uh, if patient is not doing their work they are just sitting they are they don't uh, there is a central sensitization is playing a major role they are sitting they don't want to do anything so the lack of mobility will also cause a contracture and the bone injuries so that because of the fear the patient will not move their limb so that time there are the chances of contracture are more and the scarring after traumatic injury or burns that is also a very natural uh, uh, symptoms of contracture so what are the prominent causes for the musculoskeletal disorder because till now we have understood that Uh, how many disorders which as a physiotherapist we see in our daily clinical practice but what are their causes it is also a very important because sometimes overuse injuries in daily life or the occupation because of that repetitive stretch like the, uh, some patient is having a work of uh, standing work so if they are their prolonged uh, standing the, for the prolonged period they are in a standing position so their lower limbs are getting uh, there is a dysfunction is coming in lower limb because sometimes we can say that dysfunction related to the vascular also because of the blood supply that is gravity towards the gravity is coming but it is not going back so the venous insufficiency lymphatic problem will also come because the fluid uh, is retaining in the lower limb that is not going in a upward direction so there are so many things in this area ligaments muscles are very important but we cannot miss the vascular or lymphatic system also because of that particular their work profile their occupation or if the some people who are choosing their over uh, upper limb more in their occupation according to that like they are using hammer or they are a carpenter so they are according to the which limb they are using more so in that there is a repetitive stress will come on particular that area if there is a some uh, they are osteoporotic and their bones are very weak and they are doing that repetitive they are doing that work so naturally their the injury the repetition of injury will be more than a normal person and the second thing is the poor posture this is also some people when they see the movie they eat the food they just sit on a slouching position because they feel comfortable in that position so their body Uh, the weight distribution is improper in their uh, lumbar spine or their thoracic spine so they just sit like this so their body adapt that type of posture so when they want to uh, give strength and or they want to do their exercise or they want to lift anything that time they feel pain because their body is uh, in a comfortable that in a slouching position so this is the poor posture or the neck which is always while using the mobile phone or while uh, seeing towards the uh, screen all the time so their uh, cervical spine the it will the text neck will come because we know that how the uh, internet has given the gift of the dysfunction that is the text neck because of that the patient is having a cervical cervicogenic headache which is because the cause is that pain is in cervical spine but it is giving the pain to the headache so this is the because pain started from the cervical the structure the first affected the cervical spine and this pain the tension headache it is going up uh, to, towards the upper cervical where the they are giving the stress so this is the cervicogenic headache which uh, because of that posture patient feel and if uh, we because of modern work we normally do our work in a standing position like uh, our I, as a uh, housewife all the kitchen work the, is in a standing position in our ancient time people sit on the floor their uh, gas stoves is kept on that particular floor and that time they do their activity so sit to stand activity there uh, the there are sacroiliac joint and iliosacral joint is moving so far they are getting the absorb the friction is very common but when we are every time we are in a standing position and when we sit that time uh, we can mismatch the alignment of that particular working also so it is the posture uh, is also determine the dysfunction which is because of the articular uh, the flexibility of bones reduce and this also you can uh, see that wrong sitting position correct sitting position standing position even bad and good running uh, position also we can see that how the line of gravity disturb 
how we are taking the uh, knee in the extension position or the in this you can see the line of gravity is a completely in a one line there is a myokinetic chain working in a proper way and this also you can see how the neck is going in a flexion position more than their capacity so bad or good walking posture it also the posture related dysfunction which create a dysfunction to the our musculoskeletal area the most uh, areas where we get the uh, overuse injuries because of that the shoulder the our lateral epicondyle the elbow and the knees because this joint is almost used more than uh, any joint because when we sit to stand walking every time we are using the patellofemoral and the infrapatellar because of that there is a osgood scatter and this uh, heel pain because of wrong uh, posture the how the because we know that the lower kinetic chain that how if the patient is having a alignment in the hip only the anterior or posterior rotation of hip itself gives the uh, tightness to the hamstring or the uh, hip flexion or extension is in a tightness so it will create a pressure on the knee if there there is a knee is the internal rotation of tibia or external rotation of tibia so it will create the pronation and supination disturbance in the foot also so this is all the uh, lower uh, the lexit approach that how we can assess the myokinetic chain because of that if there is a uh, developmental or there is a the true uh, shortening leg length shortening through or the developmental so we have to differentiate all these things because that leg length discrepancy will cause the pain to the knee and that knee pain to the ankle and foot so we have to check all these things also we can also keep in this musculoskeletal disorder because of the hip to foot or foot to hip if there is a sometimes because of the accident also they are they give the heavy impact on the genetic uh, generate the injuries and fracture of the skeletal system and the soft tissue injury so these are also the causes for musculoskeletal disorder sometimes uh, uh, because of that cast the the bone alignment the misalignment the bone bone joint misalignment in a this misalignment so after that when the cast is over that particular bone is not in a proper shape the proper alignment that time also because of that misalignment that particular area which muscles were there sometimes they muscles uh, uh, get in a shortening or some muscle go in the tightness so that is also cause the musculoskeletal disorder old age that is also a very important because of uh, in the old age there is a degenerative changes arthritis they are the major musculoskeletal disorder that stand out the reason for major because the patient is having uh, uh, always they have a central sensitization if i will walk like this i will fall if i am in a pain i will do more activity i will get more pain so there are so many things there is a uh, where the central sensitization play a very major role for the elderly patient and uh, because of that fear of fall the, their gait deviation becomes uh, change and uh, because of osteoporosis or there is a pain in suppose they are having a pain in a knee so that time they just uh, because of that one knee is in a pain they opt the antalgic gait so that time the deviation of their and the gravity the center of gravity disturb and they fall so this is all that old age is also a very uh, major cause for musculoskeletal disorder because normally we say in our house to the old people uh, uh, person that uh, we can we have to manage everything but if there is a fall for the old patient it is very difficult to manage because if there is a hip fracture so that patient will not be able to perform their daily activity it will be more difficult for them so this is a very major cause uh, the old age in that we have to take care of old people so that they are uh, there we have to prevent them from the fall immobilization of limbs for a long time yes when our upper limbs are under the cast after that we have to see that the after the cast removal their joints flexibility and their movements the range of motion which we have already discussed and even in the older people if they are cured with a fracture the fear of getting pain may prevent from actively moving the limb we don't uh, if they are having a cast the old age patient on their elbow 
so after that they will not uh, do their activity because there is a fear that yes it will break again my i will it will hurt my hand i am not able to do this so this will also cause the musculoskeletal disorder either we can add with the central sensitization or with the uh, fear of pain uh, we can add in this or we can say that yes there is a restriction of range of motion that uh, if we uh, treat if they take the physiotherapy we can treat them a proper way that how we can give the range of motion according to the their uh, body structure or their by seeing their taking the evaluation and history that either they are diabetic or they are uh, they are osteoporotic or they are some uh, genital genital uh, disorder they are having so according to that we can treat them sometimes improper exercises that is also a very major cause uh, for the musculoskeletal disorder because uh, i have seen that uh, people lift the weight with the very uh, uh, they feel very confident that yes i can lift the weight they lift 50 kg 60 kg perfectly no problem but while leaving that particular weight they just throw the weight down and they just go back that time that jerk that come in their spine it always causes a major problem because because in a confidence they uh, pull it but after keeping it back they do it very in a wrong direction so this is also the improper exercise because if there is a not proper instructor in your gym or the area where you are going to exercise so it will uh, worsen your symptom or it will give you a injury so please be careful while uh, doing the exercise it is very important and like in this we can see that squatting itself also that how this this improper squat plays a major they are bent decks and the curve you can see in this picture also and in this also how they are keeping their hand straight after that the knee and the their toes their foot is in a alignment after that they are keeping their weight in a their hip into downward position in the squatting position so this is the proper way how we have to do the squat slip and falls this is a very uh, major the impact of slip strips and falls when this the soft tissue injuries comes and the muscles and tendons got injured so it is also a very uh, dangerous for the especially for the kids and the older the little baby uh, when they are, they are going to start their walking sometimes there is the, they don't see that sometimes here and there the water is there so they keep their foot on that and they uh, fall and after that they get the head injury also or while climbing on the stairs and the old people also sometimes they slippery floor will give them a slip strips and falls and this is also very important that workplace accidents that is also a very major cause for musculoskeletal uh, disorder because the area where the uh, the person is working according to that they got some injuries if there is a some heavy objects they are lifting or some uh, chemicals and there are according to that uh, their workplace they are getting the musculoskeletal impairment this is work related uh, muscle because it is uh, according to the data collected by the survey of occupational injuries and illness on the day from work like the patient uh, after doing their when they are on their workplace so msd cases are the sole reason for around 30% of the employees days away from the work because of the having injury or in their uh, either in the their muscles or they are the repetitive injury because of that particular work so if they are the labor working on freight stock and material movers and the nursing assistant and driver or heavy trucks have taken more dfw due to the muscular disability dfw means days away from their work so they have to keep so that the the repetitive injury will not come and the work related musculoskeletal disorders are Uh, in that also because in the employee employer both suffers because uh, they are not getting the proper uh, they are the working people and the person is not getting their proper salary so there are uh, so many things uh, which mismatch with this work related musculoskeletal disorder and the most people suffer inflammation due to over exertion of work related duties and the painful symptoms
in this also there is a ergonomic either the risk factor because of the work related force repetition and posture or the individual risk factor poor work practices poor fitness poor health habits these all cause the musculoskeletal disorder so in this the risk factor you can see that the fatigue versus recovery how this seesaw is working and individual if there is a ergonomic risk factor like if they are on a their work area so how it is and then if there is a individual risk factor so fatigue versus recovery so this is all uh, the work related problem because uh, patient know that uh, they are working on their workplace repetitively they are doing they have to carry the load if there is a he is a labor he has to carry the load daily he has to carry these 10 or uh, 20 bags daily he know that he has to do but that give them a pressure yes day by day he is getting a fatigue he is his work uh, efficiency is going down because he is feeling when after carrying 10 or 12 bags he is carrying that bag with the pain with the with the tension that yes i am getting something in there is some injury is going inside my body so this is the pressure because of that they are not able to perform properly so the poor work the force repetition posture effect and that caused it to the musculoskeletal disorder and the symptoms we know that the recurrent pain stiffness dull pain redness swelling or edema and the muscle weakness when we uh, do the the entire body in the pain and some people completely beaten up so these are the symptoms it comes so diagnosis of musculoskeletal uh, how we can uh, diagnose it so we know that uh, nobody can suspect impairment all of a sudden it never come in a sudden way never overlook the pain and discomfort in the initial stage because if we sometimes we ignore it or joint pains and the stiffness of muscle and joints are wake up calls they start waking up the call yes i am in a trouble i am in a trouble but we ignore and we uh, we prolong for that the critical situation so availing of an we have to take the advice of consultation and it will definitely save our further damage but we never do this we just increase our strain and uh, if uh, we take the history from the patient then definitely the patient will say this pain i am having from last 15 days this pain i am having from a last last one month or from 2 to 3 months i am getting that i am feeling that i am having a pain or i am having a lumbar pain or the spinal uh, pain or the iliac pain everything they can explain but there nobody will say that yesterday i have started this pain so i am uh, coming here to doctor uh, for the better treatment because they be prolonged symptoms after that we consult to the doctor and after that that when the doctor prescribe the physiotherapy patient comes to us so it, it very long cycle uh, uh, it's not a sudden thing it is taking the by the time taking process so after that 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 the injury is repetitive stress it cause more injury so this is the criteria of a normal human being because of that they suffer more but when they uh, comes to physiotherapist they want the immediate response because in front of doctor they cannot say anything because doctor will only prescribe the they will write the steroid they will write the pain killer or anti inflammatory or any uh, gel you to take or and go to the physiotherapist but as a physiotherapist our role comes how we can evaluate how we take the history how we can uh, do our assessment and a proper thing uh, of that patient yes what are the symptoms what what are the aggravating factor what are the relieving factor either your symptoms are constant either your symptoms are intermittent according to that either you are you are pain in a static position or your pain is in a dynamic position you are sitting and you are always you are getting in a constant symptom that time uh, i have to think that there is something wrong in between in the body because this is a, a con uh, constant symptom it means there is something inflammation infection inside the body also but if there is a intermittent symptom they are coming and going so we can relate with either the posture either the movements can cause either the muscle tightness or the at the joints uh, are becoming weak or there is a uh, connective tissues or the collagen fibers they are uh, uh, getting uh, in that there is a problem so we can so many things we can add on and we can evaluate 
so here uh, uh, before going for the diagnosis uh, as a physiotherapist our evaluation and history it's a uh, very important so that we can clearly understand the patient symptom so how we can uh, prevent musculoskeletal disorder this is also a very important thing if we are having a workplace so better work in, in, in environments rest to the body and the mind and knowledge to the handle the work pressure so there are two, because of that particular area where we are working either we are working from home we are working from office we are a labor we are a office uh, office barrier or i am a teacher i am a nurse whatever the work profile is mine i have to need the better work environment so then i can work uh, in a uh, comfortable position or if i have a sitting work i have to sit on a proper chair where i am getting a proper uh, posture where i can do my work properly or if i am having my work i am a sports person so what type of injury can come in my foot so i have to use the best shoes that's best sole so that i can prevent more injury or if i am uh, driving so my car seat is should be comfortable how i can drive for a long i am going for a long drive so if i am a driver so i have to see according to that we have to set the environment so that we are not uh, going for the musculoskeletal impairments and this is a very important uh, slide which i have added in this because uh, musculoskeletal uh, dysfunction we know you want to have water ma'am yes sir hmm I have to take one minute break also, sir. Yeah, Just no problem. Months. Yeah, yeah. So we will be continuing the presentation after a short break. Uh, ensure that uh, people who have typed your questions previously, um, you might have noted that that questions were addressed in the presentation. For example, causes, how to prevent uh, musculoskeletal disorders. Uh, these were addressed just now in the slides. So some of you might have uh, put your questions, but those questions were already taken by Madam. So make sure that you don't ask the same question on the screen. Okay. When I enable the unmute at the end of the presentation, it is like um, after everything is taken, you ask on the same thing. Okay. It should not be like that. You should always try to see. how you can apply that knowledge and ask a question mm -hmm. for example the latest question muscle spasm um how many of you think muscle spasm is a diagnosis can you put on the chat yes or no muscle spasm is a diagnosis shab and said anyone else others no idea sandhya also answered yes she said uh, what she said i am not telling okay because we always base our decision depending upon what others are telling okay if i keep an open chat you will see everybody is telling yes 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 you tend to say yes okay the crowd uh, psychology uh, remember muscle spasm is a cause or an effect i say muscle spasm is a cause for the neck pain or muscle spasm is a effect of the neck pain so you put c means cause e means effect aman sandhya shob archana dr vikas mixed responses shweta dr anup what we see here is uh, clinicians have given correct answers whereas students are still thinking muscle spasm is the cause of the problem no muscle spasm is the effect of the problem it is always called as protective okay 
that means the muscle is trying to protect some other tissue which is in injury it can be a nerve injury it can be a ligament injury and the muscle goes into spasm muscle's own injury tendon injury fascia injury and the muscle goes to spasm deeper muscle injury superficial muscle goes into spasm agonist injury synergists go into spasm in various aspects the spasm is always because of <coughs> what it mean because of an injury which is beside it or beneath it sometimes we also see spasm because of spinal cord injuries um don't confuse that with the spasticity spasticity is neurophysiological it is tone that is elevated and it is identified by velocity dependent increase in tone that means you do a movement slowly there is no resistance at all passive movement but the moment you do faster immediately it gets stuck you are not able to extend the elbow because you did the flexion faster so you do quick movements and then you will find the joint movement is restricted it is like a catch so that is spasticity velocity dependent but spasm is it will not allow movement at all if my biceps is in spasm i will always be tending to hold my biceps as a patient and if somebody touches the biceps i will tell paining okay if the therapist touches for palpating i will say no 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 paining okay and then if somebody moves i will not allow okay so i will move my body i will have my antalgic uh, expressions okay so that is spasm clearly relationship with the pain spasticity may not be associated with pain later spasticity leads to contracture uh how do i make you understand is spasm is like a egoistic boyfriend girlfriend or spouse okay so whatever you do they will try to protect you they will come and they will tell that they will make the decision for you okay they don't allow you to do anything freely parents also of course but nowadays parents are more liberal they know children are uncontrollable okay so you see spasm is like over protective that same nature okay so it can come from a spouse or a, a girlfriend boyfriend or it can come from a parents whereas spasticity is like teacher and students that is the corticospinal tract from the brain descending it is actually inhibitory for the stretch reflex that inhibition is not there because of the stroke because of the spinal cord injury so the students are making huge noise in the classroom because teacher is not there so corticospinal tract and spasticity is like a class teacher who is not present and the students are making noise that is the hypertonia which is there in the muscles okay initially they'll be silent they'll be waiting for whether teacher is coming or not the class representative will stand at the door and keep watching whether teacher is coming or not once they know teacher not coming then the noise will start same like that spasticity has hypotonia the silence in the beginning after that a hypertonia the noise okay that is spasticity spasm is the egoistic or over protective relationships okay and tightness tightness is shortening of the muscle it's a passive process okay so it's not causing pain when you stretch the muscle you will find a stretch sensation and after stretch then the pain will come okay so you get a stretch yeah stretch 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 uh, yeah 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 now it's paining but you continue no problem do it more the patient will tell you continue the stretch because they are feeling good that stretch is a comfortable stretch they like that that is tightness it elongates the soft tissue okay and that tightness is your own laziness uh, students own laziness that i don't want to go to college today 
I don't want to go out of hostel. A clinician who feels that I should not give any appointments today. So that is tightness. It's not overprotective nature. It's not a lack of a, a principal. The faculties are happy in the staff room. Or lack of teacher. Students are happy in the classroom. Um, lack of a senior physio in the clinic. And uh, the junior physios are using their phones and chit-chatting in front of patients. Okay. Everything that is spasticity. Because higher control not there. And if you also see, when the teacher is not there, students will start fighting each other. Boys and girls will fight. Girls, the first row versus last row, they'll fight. Boys might start playing cricket. Everything will happen. That is rigidity. That is agonist, antagonist. Ah, both of them are hypertonic. Okay, agonist alone is hypertonic, is spasticity. Although problem is neurophysiological, you will find that if I have spasticity of biceps and it stays for more than three weeks, biceps is prone to get tight also. So spasticity will come with tightness. But the same way, if I have flaccidity, hypotonia, and I get a shoulder subluxation, the humerus is actually distally dislocated inferiorly, subluxated in stroke. And then it is pressurizing on my nerves. Inferiorly, what nerves are there in the shoulder? Axillary and ulnar nerve. So that ulnar nerve weakness and axillary, sometimes may be median nerve if it is anteriorly also unstable because shoulder instability more commonly anterior. And you see that this inferior subluxation of the shoulder will impinge on the nerves and I might get a spasm. Because there is a nerve injury, then I get the spasm in a patient with the spasticity. So do not think that patient has spasticity, so there will not be tightness. Patient has spasticity, so there will not be spasm. If there is an injury, spasm will come. Another example of spasticity leading to spasm is cerebral palsy child. We always do tendo-achilles stretching. The child cries. We just ignore the cry. We tell the mother, play with the child and give the toys. And we stretch the foot to produce a dorsiflexion, passive stretching. It's unfortunate. It should not be done. But uh, many of them do that. Okay, children are like, they are sitting like this and they'll be like uh, uh, crying and the therapist will be enthusiastically doing dorsiflexion of the foot against the spasticity. That will create micro ruptures in the tendo Achilles because it's a kid. It is spasticity is because of the central nervous system. If you are doing a passive stretching, it is useful only for tightness, not for spasticity. For spasticity, you have to train the brain, not the foot. There should be exercises for the child to sit to stand, to crawl, to use the legs for kicking a football task. That is the exercise for the brain. But unfortunately, some therapists do the passive movements. Even uh, PNF, for example, if improperly given proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation, excessive stretch is given in the hamstring micro tears within the hamstring. Stretching time, the spasticity will come. Against the spasticity, you are forcing it, there might be a micro rupture and then it will create a spasm. And the kid never stops crying at all that session. Finally, you tell the mother, okay, okay, no problem. Today's session, uh, too much the child is irritated, bring tomorrow. We are not identifying that. It is spasm because of the treatment, iatrogenic injury. So there are a lot of things which we need to differentiate. Tightness is shortening of muscle, whereas contracture is shortening of fascia. So the fascia is tight, contracture. Muscle is tight, tightness. Passive movement, not allowing. Spasm, active also will pain, 
passive also will pain muscle spasm will not allow anything because it is over protective egoistic and the same way you see for contracture is like a total depression you shut down the door you don't want to go outside the house a perfect withdrawal that is contracture okay you are totally upset so the tissue is also upset like that so try to differentiate between spasm spasticity tightness contracture and of course you also have other type of muscle dysfunctions which is like muscle is not able to move because of adhesion with the fascia you know that fascia is not elastic muscle is elastic that means muscle is a studious brilliant student fascia is a lazy student both of them become friends what will happen the brilliant student cannot study so the same way the muscle cannot contract because there is an adhesion if the muscle is free it will contract and the fascia cannot glide i repeat fascia gliding fascia cannot glide because there is an adhesion muscle cannot contract because there is an adhesion you relieve the adhesion muscle can contract you mobilize the fascia you can relieve the facial adhesion you keep a cup the fascia adhesion can be removed it can be lifted because of cupping so various processes but understand the types of muscle dysfunctions i am not talking about trigger points i am not talking about muscle rupture i am not telling about muscle strain or sprain those are diagnosis myofascial trigger points is a diagnosis muscle rupture is a diagnosis muscle strain hamstring strain gradual onset overuse that is also diagnosis muscle sprain sternocleid and mastoid sprain neck sprain a sudden turning movement and then you got a catch that is also diagnosis but other shunts tightness contracture spasm and also spasticity all of them are signs the clinical signs s i g n s what the therapist is examining on the patient that determines what type of treatments we are going to give not the strain or sprain if the patient with rupture has a spasm the spasm has to be treated if the patient with strain is having a muscle tightness hamstring tightness <coughs> excuse me with the hamstring strain it means that you have to <coughs> lengthen that muscle because it is tightness so you treat the tightness not the strain <coughs> so for which your evaluation of myofascial dysfunctions are very important and we are continuing with madam now uh, when she will be explaining this facial dysfunctions and also articular and neural because the primary aspects of differentiation when you are examining as a physical therapist is articular dysfunction myofascial dysfunction and neural dysfunctions as a manual therapist okay you want to do some hands on techniques can cupping be given for joint can cupping be given for muscles can cupping be given for nerves so like that joints muscles and nerves articular myofascial and neural this is called as impairment based decision making what are the impairments articular impairment myofascial impairment and neural impairments so we are going to listen from madam now and i am going to continue the recording so that she can take over yes ma'am ready you can unmute yes sir yes ma'am go ahead Yes, so uh, sir has explained in a very uh, beautiful way how we can differentiate between spasm tightness and the spasticity and uh, what is the role of fascia and what is the role of the muscle how we can release uh, 
uh, the fascia and because of the bicep in the muscle so if they are both are in a adhesion fascia with the uh, muscle so how we can uh, remove it by using there are some agents or we can uh, activate that particular muscle and then release the fascia so this is all very important to know about because sir has very clearly explained you that you can now easily understand that what is the spastic what is the spastic spasticity and what is the tightness for that we are going to understand about the uh, if there is a patient is having a facial dysfunction it means the fascia is not working properly because of that their inner structure the joints and the muscles they and the nerves they are not because they are getting the compression they are getting the stretch so how we can uh, use this also by uh, releasing that particular fascia and what are the symptoms we feel in the patient because the sign and the symptoms also sir has explained how we can differentiate between what are the signs and what are the symptoms of that particular uh, diagnosis so it is also very important so some symptoms tend to vary depending on the severity of injury so the facial dysfunction it is very painful and usually causes the affect area to swell up because if the fascia is tight or at particular place so that that area the fascia is tight so it is not allowing the uh, underside muscle to uh, do their movement so it means that there is a sometimes the patient feels swelling on that area also and some movements uh, are that not not performed in a regular in the regular range of motion such as that arms and the legs they are not working the range of motion is restricted if there is a facial adhesion so though it may be done they will do their movement but it will be uh, uh, they will do with the difficulty and with the severe pain and there are some symptoms which may include with the facial dysfunction is the discoloration of the skin uh, we can see in the patient's uh, body that there is a bruising the tenderness of that particular affected area limited range of motion joint instability and the bone deformity will sometimes also can be seen so this is uh, a very different uh, topic because we know that the uh, articular myofascial neural and uh, we know that all these things when the dysfunction comes but when we treat about the fascia so there are some types of uh, dis uh, facial dysfunction which is very different from uh, our uh, as a physiotherapist term so there are uh, some dysfunction which are related to the trigger band like deformation of banded facial tissue means there is a trigger band on that particular muscle like if i will talk about the upper trapezius and the levator scapulae so they are the muscle superficial and the medial layer so like uh, uh, for the sir was explaining that how for the uh, for the deeper muscle how the upper side of muscle goes in the uh, in there uh, they are having a spasm so that that gives the protective phenomena to the inner side muscle so it will not harm so uh, sometimes we see as a myofascial release in our myofascial release we check that particular area is there any trigger band or is there is there a taut band or is there is a uh, patient is getting that twitch response if i am keeping and the patient is in a spasmic condition if i will keep my hand on that the patient the jumping sign will come the patient will not allow you to touch that area so at that time i have to check that there is a trigger band either they, these trigger bands are active trigger bands or the latent trigger band it is if there is a latent they were in a sleeping mode but i have uh, given give them a wake up call so they are now start crying and if there is a active trigger band they they just keeping my hand they will start uh, crying so these are the trigger band which when we are treating to fascia we know that we have an as a physiotherapist i am keeping my hand on the patient neck or on the spine i have to understand that what is that trigger band because trigger means means they are triggering the pain so we know that these are the band we can feel there is a twitch band there is a twitching of that particular muscle which is crossing to each other so that time they are not allowing their proper functioning in their movement in the, their i have to say that uh, shoulder elevation so which muscles they are going in a elevation work if there is a trigger band so the patient will always uh, uh, spasmic position they will keep their hand on that they will not allow the elevation of that particular area so i have to check that trigger band and after that there is a herniated trigger point because if trigger points uh, in facial dysfunction it is like a the trigger point is like a road if at one place it is open 
if the trigger band is coming there is a open roads so whatever the inside structure that is the herniated because we know the herniated part for the disc prolapse how the disc material comes out because of the herniation of the disc same that if there is a trigger band the opening of that particular muscle so that there is a uh, if there is a uh, like a pearl like a uh, uh, band the point which like a herniated abnormal protrusion of that particular area will come out from the facial plane so it comes the herniated trigger point come with a trigger band because that area is open so anybody can come out like this type of uh, feeling in that fascia if there is a continuum deformation means uh, we know that there is an a joint like i will talk about the elbow joint so where the alignment between the ligament and tendon so the their transition zone in between the transition zone sometimes that ligaments uh, grow more towards the tendon in the transition zone and sometimes the tendon uh, inverted or inverted some like inverted they are coming upside inverted and they are coming in down the that particular zone that that their transition zone so they will move inverted and inverted so they will cause the fascia the continuum deformation and if there is a folding deformation three dimensional alteration of fascia means fascia is becoming a fold so we have to upfold the fascia like all around the joints suppose uh, i will talk about the ankle joint so near about the achilles tendons or i will say that according to that their fascia is in a folding position so we have to release that fascia by upfolding techniques for this we have a, a very a nice course in our aum but if you want to if you want to upgrade yourself for this uh, facial dysfunction how you can treat you can take that course so that uh, you can easily understand that how we can release the fascia if there is having a trigger band herniated trigger band continuum deformation and the folding and if i will talk about the cylinder deformation so because in the vascular or the neural there is a spiral like structure that like the spiral we move so there is a spiral deformation comes so overlapping of the cylinder for the facial coils so according to that we release the fascia according to that so that the nerve supply will be normal or the vascular or the lymphatic fluid will be in a normal flow and is there the tectonic fixation it, it means there is a the, earth earthquake comes that glides the plates moves on one upon uh, another so it is type of like that fascia is in a tectonic fixation like sometimes uh, we get the thrust to the neck so it comes like the sound it comes like this so we know that there is a tectonic fixation also means gliding of one to another so this type of facial distortion also come and this is a very uh, uh i think it is very important to understand about this facial because sometimes uh, uh, joints are normal muscles are normal best because of the facial adhesion facial dysfunction patient's range of motion restriction is coming because of that like in a frozen shoulder the internal rotation is not uh, coming properly so that time we have to uh, check that how we can release that particular sometimes the fascia is in adhesion so we can release this uh, by this proper uh, knowledge of facial dysfunction we can release that particular fascia and we can give the proper range of motion of internal rotation so uh, please uh, uh, feel free to contact to sir if you want to learn about this uh, topic this i have added uh, in a very short way but in the sir uh, in the course sir has explained in a full how we can release the fascia in a according to their facial dysfunction so uh, in that we also follow some principle of facial dysfunction so we uh, have to uh, treat the patient with the active muscle contraction not only the passive treatment some muscles same muscle we use when the muscle inhibit and the weak synergistic muscle we use if there is a weak or overactive muscle antagonist muscle because these points which i am telling you sir also already explain that by the spasmodic by the tightness the antagonist agonist which which are egoistic and which are compensating with each other so how we use to release that fascia it is all about that topic also and sometimes uh, we have to uh, uh, use that how to check the superficial layer where there is a trigger band and then continuum deformation on tendon and ligament comes because the trigger band on upper layer is coming but the uh, the deeper layer they are they are is having a continuum deformation where the the ligaments and tendons either the inner side or outer side they are 
shifting in the transition zone that time also the range of motion restriction will come so either this is the shoulder joint or the elbow joint where the joints movements plays a very ma major role because we have already learned about the contraction or the removal of the cast so that time also there is a contraction in fascia come so that time we use this uh, facial dysfunction and the, the uh, therapy manual therapy for the uh, to release that fascia according to their distortions so this is also very important and uh, we should not miss when we are going to treat our patient for the musculoskeletal disorder so facial dysfunction should be uh, in our uh, up base so that we can release the fascia also so in this also the indication we know that if there is a in the joint problem the the indication for facial uh, deformation treatment are generally the disorder of the musculoskeletal system and it is also characterized by the chronic pain many disorder of the musculoskeletal system that has been difficult to treat and only healed very slowly in the past can now be treated much because if we know the facial techniques so we can uh, give the proper treatment because i have treated articular i have treated myofascial i have treated neural i have checked all these things but if the addition in the fascia how i will release that is also very important because of that if it is stuck so how the range of motion will come so i have to work on this facial dysfunction also so it is important to uh, take all the point in a sequel way articular myofascial neural and the facial addition with the myofascial release or the facial myo muscular release also because in empty we we are not only releasing the fascia we activate the muscles also because when we activate the muscle and then we release the fascia this is facio muscular release in that this is a active in this uh, the patient is a active participant because we explain the patient to activate that particular muscle also contract that muscle that time we release the fascia with the glide either with the istm either uh, we can give with the hand we can release the fascia so there are so many other option which we will see in a further slide also so this is the how we can facial dysfunction we can treat so for the musculoskeletal disorder we know the major reason for disability is impairment in the most people work related pain and sometimes uh, repetitive injuries so these are the reason uh, for which we are going to treat the musculoskeletal disorder but the active participation uh, of the patient not in a passive participation because uh, uh, we know that uh, if day by day we are improving so our manual therapy should also be improved for the betterment of our patient we have to because today is the demand that patient wants uh, the answer of everything why i am getting this why this is the what is the cause of my this pain so we should be uh, more uh, understandable than the patient so that we can give them a proper knowledge yes this is the cause and i am going to give you this treatment either for your joints or your muscle nerves or your fascia so it is uh, our duty to understand about the proper functioning of how we can treat the musculoskeletal disorder not in a one direction although in a multi direction so after that we are going towards the uh, we have seen the sim, uh, sign symptoms and the word did they but what is the cause of musculoskeletal disorder and what are the musculoskeletal disorder either they are hereditary or they are developmental so these are we have differentiated but after that now if the patient is in front of me what is my role because the patient is uh, coming uh, uh, for the treatment so how i will start my treatment so i will divide into the central sensitization because the uh, brain plays a very major role of for the healing we all know that because sometimes uh, the, the patient uh, mental status is very weak they are not able to understand what we want to give them a exercise so we have to start with the central sensitization we have to start their brain by taking their history taking and doing the proper evaluation and in that we have to uh, there are so many things we can differentiate between either Uh, the their pain is the hyperalgesia pain or there is a allodynia means if i am touching they are feeling the pain or there the small uh, gripping causing a uh, they are shouting so these are the things which we should know either they are telling truth or either they are making the uh, his making some stories to tell about their uh, pain so 
that is also uh, not the psychiatrist part but it is also the part of physiotherapist to treat the patient brain and articular dysfunction we know about that where the bones and joints plays a very major role uh, and if the bones and joints are in a dysfunction it will create it will pull or push the myofascial structure also and if the myofascial structures are not in a uh, comfortable position so they will hit the nerves also and they will not allow them the nerve to uh, travel in all along their course of nerve because we know where the muscle the same nerve is going through with simultaneously with that nerve and the muscle they are going simultaneously so they will affect each other if they are happy so also if they are sad so also so we have to understand this is also thing we don't treat the patient in a single way treat in a multi direction what are the symptoms and what are the causes and very uh, important thing this is the motor control which as a physiotherapist we miss this motor control we never train the patient for their core stability we never uh, when we are talking about the lower limb we never uh, uh, instruct the patient for the uh, contraction for the pelvic floor the gluteal muscles which give a best result for our treatment or even if i am treating the cervical spine so so deep uh, cervical flexor how to activate them so it is these are the things Uh, which we are learning from a best pace so we know that how we can uh, give a uh, better treatment uh, for our patient so first we uh, start with the central sensitization which is that how the patient feels their uh, this uh, appropriate their pain experience either they are in a the uh, diffuse pain distribution or the central sensitization if there is a nociceptive pain or is there is a uh, hyperalgesia patient and the uh, allod ineas there are so many thing in according to the central sensitization we have to check either the pain is completely uh, from the musculoskeleton or the uh, the uh, skeleton system or the patient uh, pain is in the feed in their brain yes last year uh, in the same day um, i got the fracture so there that history is feed in that brain yes if i will do this exercise again i will uh, get this type of pain i will give uh, i will get this type of fracture also if i am going in the outside of sunlight i will get the headache so these are the central sensitization which patient uh, write in their mind whenever they do that activity they they remind them that yes again it will it will be happen it will be happen so this is the central sensitization if the patient is the treatment target is central mechanism first treat that if the, the central sensitization is okay and the patient is having a peripheral mechanism and the neuropathic pain or the musculoskeletal nociceptive pain where the body is either the somatic dysfunction is there or the visceral dysfunction is there sometimes what happens that patient is having a problem in a visceral suppose patient is having a pain in a liver but uh, uh, after because of liver pain he is getting a pain because he is sitting like in a slouching position or he is getting a pain in a lower back because of he adopted a wrong posture so uh, the patient is not able to understand that either my pain is coming from the liver or my pain is coming from a lower back so this is also we have to differentiate either the pain the somatic was the first or the visceral was second or the visceral is first that visceral is causing the somatic that is also a very important because uh, when uh, we were learning uh, from uh, santhil sir about the visceral uh, manipulative therapy when we were learning the visceral course there we have seen that the structure the muscles which are passing through that particular area uh, either if i am talking about the kidney to so retroperitoneal peritoneal area the retro side the kidney is in our back side so the lumbar spine also causes the pain when the patient is having a kidney pain so how i can see that either the lumbar spine was in the pain first or after that the patient is having a kidney pain or kidney pain was first the renal dysfunction was first after that patient is having a somatic pain also so these are the things and the ligaments which are supporting that particular visceral organ they are in a tightening or they are in a shortening because of that the patient is having a pain so we have so many uh, in this also we have a manual therapy how we can uh, if the with the lower contralateral side or we have the lower limb uh, change the positioning of lower limb with the uh, we can also check in this the visceral organ or if i am talking about the uh, psoas major is in tightness so how we can check with the hip flexion the contraction of the hip flexion 
or we can check either the muscular pain because of the psoas major is hip flexion is paining or the pain is coming from the abdomen or the visceral organ so there are so many things we have to rule out after that uh, we have to start our treatment so this is the no i have already explained that how we can differentiate between nociceptive nociplastic and neuropathic what is nociceptive because we know that the nerve fibers in which all the structure the nerve fibers so they are getting the somatic pain the nociceptive pain like the pain in the joints osteoarthritis ankle sprain if there is a nociceptive the patient is having a brain memory that yes uh like fibromyalgia they are having a pain in all over the body temporomandibular joint so th that non specific low pain also and uh, so you can see in this also and uh, this is the neuropathic pain which the pain is coming from the nerve related either the diabetic neuropathy the carpentalans tunnel syndrome and the complex regional pain syndrome so these are the factor uh, which cause the pain either the nociceptive nociplastic and neuropathic so we have to uh, differentiate all these thing when we are treating with the central sensitization after that we have to move forward for the next according to the articular dysfunction if this is a psycho uh, social factor also if there is a patient is doing the smoking and the diet conscious and the depression the suicidal risk substance and drug abuse obesity fracture risk so these are also the cause for the musculoskeletal pain and where the psychosocial factor plays a very major role after that we are moving toward the articular component this is a very important when we talk about the skeletal disorder because we know that word skeleton when comes in our mind we know that there is a art joints and the bones plays a very major role in this so for treating that structure we have a uh, so many uh, articular uh, techniques approaches because of that we can uh, differentiate between the patient symptom like mckenzie technique and maligan technique metland concept muscle energy technique cerex technique or the craniosacral therapy and what are the principle the assessment is the key to success technique is merely a tool like a technique is a brain child of <clears throat> we can imagine we can originality and the creativity of particular pain there is a no set techniques but according uh, in ampt we uh, give treatment according to the patient centered approach we never treat the technique centered because techniques are for one technique is for but it will suit to my patient or not so it's my duty i have to check which uh, technique is suitable for my patient so my my patient is not meant for the testing for all the techniques i have to decide that what technique i will give to my patient not the, the like we can differentiate those uh, i have a two frozen shoulder patient i cannot give them a same treatment because maybe one patient is having a dominant uh, hand frozen shoulder and another is a non dominant or some has having a problem in external rotation and other has is having a internal rotation so how can i say that i can give a each every technique to all the patient so i have to treat according to my patient preference and my patient uh, uh, suitability what type of treatment they can uh, bear or according to that i will plan my treatment so what is mckenzie concept it is also a very well known technique we used especially for the back pain or the survive or the, for the spine we use that mckenzie concept because it is in the mckenzie concept we show the which movements reproduce your pain or which where is the aggravated aggravating direction which is the relieving direction because in this mckenzie concept the main thing is that we have to reduce the pain restore the function advise to maintain pain relief and advise on positioning and posture to prevent reoccurrence so this is the centralization of the pain or or the peripheralization of the pain we have to work on that for the mckenzie concept so this is the classification where the posture related pain means enrage stress of for the normal structure dysfunction related and range shortened structures like scarring fibrosis nerve root adhesions and derangement and autonomical disruption like and at the end range uh, the displacement with the motion segment is the syndrome where the centralization is likely to be occur so this is the three key points for the mckenzie for the postural dysfunction posture dysfunction and derangement 
After that, uh, we have the uh, Maitland mobilization algorithm. We know about that. How we can examine our Arctic floor structure because these the McKenzie, Maitland, and Mulligan we normally use for the Arctic floor dysfunction. Their their techniques are used for Arctic floor dysfunction. So in this examination, uh, what causes the symptom? We have to check where are the symptom at which region that there is a symptoms or how the symptomatic the patient is. So we have to check all these things either the hypermobility. Or the instability, so we have to differentiate because what causes the symptom, the hypermobility or the instability, we have to differentiate. If there is a hypermobility, we have to give the mobilization, or if there is an instability, means the lack of instability, we have to stabilize that particular region. So when uh, we use uh, the Maitland glides, uh, we know that when we uh, use the Maitland Maitland concept. Uh, for the static dysfunction, if the patient is having a pain in a static, like he is in a sitting position, he is having a pain, or he is in a standing position, he is having a pain. Pain, not in a dynamic in the movement or the functional position. That time we can give the Maitland glides to proper. We have to evaluate that in which direction uh, is uh, the range of motion, in which direction movement is restricted. So according to that, I will <clears throat> decide my glide. To according to that, that so that patient can easily, comfortably they can stand because their uh, dysfunction is uh, static. So I have to give the Maitland glides. Like in this, uh, the sir is giving the because the patient when the patient is uh, from sit to stand, they are uh, they the patient was standing. So that time they were feeling the pain in their their knee joint, and their according to that. We have to give the internal uh, rotation of that particular tibia, and that time we can give the medial glide also. Please, participants, do not mark anything on the slide. Whoever marked it, please delete immediately. I think uh, some Arvind Kumar is doing because his name is coming on that part. That time when he is marking. Arvind Kumar Chauhan. Who was it? Do not touch the screen during the speaker's presentation. Don't you understand English? Okay. You remove the file and then share it again. I'm removing the participant. It's unnecessary inconvenience for the speaker. The people are marking something on the slides and uh, yeah, yes. Wait, hold on. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. So uh, in the static position, if the dysfunction in a static position, that time our treatment goal for with the Maitland glides where uh, we can give a proper glide according to the restriction direction. So that patient can feel uh, more confident. If uh, you people want to upgrade yourself, we are having a full course of uh, Maitland course also, Mulligan course also, and uh, you can upgrade yourself because in this I have added some pics so that uh, I can give you an idea that how we treat the patient when the patient is having a problem at the static position of with the articular dysfunction or the dynamic the functional dysfunction, like they are not uh, able to. Uh, proper do their exercise like sit to stand or uh, their walking stair climbing so that time how we treat uh, uh, give our treatment for the articular dysfunction so in this that there is a we all know about the joint mobilization grades are here we know that how we can give the mobilization uh, if the range of motion is restriction how we can like in this uh, picture you can see that uh, this is the grade one a is the starting position of the movement and B is the anatomic limit of the movement. Like I have to, I can take this, my range of motion till the B. So how I will, the great one, I will start <clears throat> with that, how I can start with a small amplitude in the limited range of motion, which I am getting. After that, I have to increase the grade two and I have to move forward towards the 
anatomic limit so i can increase the range and in the grade 3 and grade 2 both we can uh, take the movement uh, the anatomical uh, take till the anatomical movement so this is the grade 3 and the in the grade 4 when we are reaching towards the final how we can give the small amplitude by for reaching to the till the end so this is the joint glides that according to the grading motion with the small amplitude in the beginning uh, of the range and where is the grade two with the large amplitude within the range but not reaching the tissue resistance so a grade 3 is the large resistance uh, with the larger amplitude and in the limit range and grade grade four with the small amplitude at the limit range of motion motion so it is the joint mobilization weight pattern when there is a range of motion restriction or in this also uh, what we can do it that before uh, giving the glides we can give the distraction to that particular area so that after that we can provide this mobilization the grading of that mobilize grade of mobilization so it gives the this separate the joint surface and makes the joint mobilized so it will be more comfortable for the patient so this is the maitland concept for the static dysfunction is also a very important when we are treating for the articular dysfunction so in this also you can see that the distraction and compression testing for articular dysfunction also give release to the patient because it is also a very important when we treat either for the facet joint or for the disc how we can in the extension position or in the flexion flexion position where the facet joints plays a major role in the extension position where is the disc plays a major role how we can give the compression to the because uh, uh, if we are talking about that patient is having a, a neural problem radiculopathy how distraction compression plays a very major role so for that also if you want to upgrade yourself you can take the cervical spine certified course in that all these condition or all these uh, techniques uh, sir has explained in a such a beautiful way and you can upgrade yourself also so this is a cervical lateral guide that is also a very useful where we can uh, <clears throat> for the neural mobilization how we can give the for the upper cervical uh, we can give the cervical glide so it can also be a very useful technique because of that cervical pain and sometimes a patient with the cervical brachial pain syndrome cervicogenic headache this cervical glide plays a very major role and this is the mulligan technique like maitland we have used for the static dysfunction same the mulligan technique we use for the dynamic when the patient's functional activity is restrictive so that time we can give the mulligan uh, technique with the mulligan movement with the mobilization with the movement or we can give the nags the natural apophyseal glides snag the sustained natural apophyseal glides and this we can uh, give as a home program sometime patients can give snags at uh, at home also with the if there is a neck problem they can use the uh, handkerchief and from that they can use it so this concept of mobilization with movement is for the extremities and the snags of for the spine so it is also with the brian mulligan they have explained in a very beautiful way but yes i will say that they have made these techniques for understanding of extremities or cervical spine but in empt we have learned in a very different way because uh, we work on a functional uh, goal in our empt so the how the which activity is patient is not able to perform in that position we uh, give the mobilization with the movement either we can use the mulligan belt we can use the thera band and if uh, the patient is not uh, uh, having like the patient is not capable to for the stair climbing so we can take the stepper then we can give that mobilization move, movement when the patient is keeping their foot on the uh, stool or the on the stepper that time we can give the mobilization to that particular joint where the range of motion is restriction so when we give the mobilization in the functional activity that is for the mobilization with the movement and this is uh, the active uh, part plays by the therapist and uh, patient and the given the treatment the mobilization given by the therapist so in this we can say that there is a stretching or the over pressure given by the therapist and it it is not only a passive treatment with mobilization with movement the the both plays a very major role in this uh who is the participant who marked it on the slide again circling did you get the name ma'am 
No, sir. This time the name is not coming. When you keep the mouse, are you seeing the name there in the mark? No, sir. Not coming. See, delete immediately. Otherwise, we'll uh, remove you. Who's the participant who's scribbling on the screen? Who has the habit of scribbling in the library books? Some people are there. They go to the library, they take the book, and they keep marking in library book also. They don't think that it is not their book. I don't sure. know who is marking like this. Why you did not get the name, ma'am? No, no, sir, not coming. Previously it was coming, but now this marking is uh, almost from my very first slide. It was coming, but I ignored that so that the flow of. Uh, no, no, no! It didn't come in the very first slide. Just last two slides it came. Now, if you move, it will show in every slide. You reload the slide. I don't know. The new version of Zoom is not giving an option for us to disable this. The participant marking on the slides. That it is visible. Yeah, yeah. Just hold on. Yes, ma'am. So uh, we were talking about the mobilization with the movement for the functional recovery. In this, I have added uh, one case report uh, from the journal. In this, uh, that this is uh, the dancer who was uh, the rotation injury in her knee. So she needs to perform in some weeks. So should inform the uh, they want the uh, proper treatment so that uh, her function will not suffer. And there was a knee is with a moderate swelling also. In this, uh, they have instructed, the doctor instructed the physiotherapist, give the mobilization with movement in which direction you are getting the pain. So it will allow you the free full range. This was the self-mobilization with movement allows for the self-care. And what exactly does the uh, MWM add to the practice? Reducing pain in the short term allows the practice and the, with the greater confidence, the understanding that is the situation is under control and the patient was able to control her condition through self-care contributes its empowerment and the reassurance. So uh, I was added it because this, I want to show that, that how the mobilization with movement works if uh, the sports person or the athletes, they want a fast recovery in which direction uh, they are in which activity or in which movement of their lower limb or upper limb they are getting a pain they can add the, we can add this mobilization with movement so that the patient can get a better result because this is the dynamic dysfunction for the articular dysfunction so we can add the mobilization with movement in this mulligan uh, movement with mobilization with movement uh, in this picture also you can see that because uh, in this, the, the patient, uh, the model is having a pain for the stair climbing. So we kept uh, his foot on the uh, stepper. And after that, we are giving the mobilization with movement with the internal rotation of the tibia. So how we can uh, add, not only for the knee joint, I have added the picture knee joint. It doesn't mean that mobilization with movement is only for the knee. We can add for all the joint, which the range of motion is restriction in a functional activity. We can give the, either we can add the mulligan belt also, and we can add, we, we can uh, simultaneously, uh, we can give the mobilization with the mulligan belt, or we can uh, uh, give the contraction to the muscles also by using the TheraBand also. So there are so many options in which what the sir has explained in our AMPT courses. Uh, in simultaneously, we can treat both the things, either the articular dysfunction or the myofascial dysfunction. Or if there is a problem with the neural component also, so we can add the orthromyoneuromanual therapy in that the, we can keep that particular region of upper limb or lower limb in a neurodynamic position itself. And that time we can give the contraction to the muscle with the TheraBand and we can glide with the mobilization with movement the for the articular joint particular so it can be applied on all the joints not only for the knee joint but it is for the understanding that yes we can give the mulligan mobilization with movement in this the syriac loose body if there is a cartilage meniscus tearing so there is a loose bodies formation in that particular joint how we can release it that we can give the distraction to particular that joint 
and we can release that loose body so it is also a very the celiac concept is also very important for treating for the articular and we have uh, we can give for the thrust manipulation uh, with the understanding of celiac concept that is also we can add on in this that you can see then the picture that the distraction is given after that uh, the internal rotation and for the loose body and we can take it the uh, the different the level then check that the patient is feeling comfortable with the extension and flexion of the knee so this is also not for the knee we can use it properly with the guidance by the learning from a proper teacher and we can use the cerex concept also for the joints where the loose body we want to reduction give the reduction to the loose bodies this is after the articular we are moving towards the myofascial component that is also a very important part where we release the muscles from the fascia or the fascia from the muscles according to the active participation so this is also very important if the patient is having a musculoskeletal disorder their joints are in a stiff position so they are having a tight muscles or they are having a spasmodic muscles so we have uh, if the patient is having a spasm so first i have to keep my patient's uh, limb in the positional release technique in which because uh, we know that if there is a aggravating factor so there is a one relieving factor also so we keep that area region in the positional release uh, placement where the patient will not get the pain after that we rule out that if the patient is not allowing you to touch that particular part it means there is a spasm which is a protective phenomena because of that the patient is not allowing you to touch so i will release the spasm if the spasm in we have a muscle energy technique if the spasm if the patient is having a tightness in the same side muscle i will use the post isometric contraction that is the phenomena of the muscle energy technique so i will uh, activate that same side of muscle by giving the post isometric contraction after that i will get the new barrier if the patient is having a pain in the spasmodic so that he will not allow me to touch that area so i will work on the antagonist the another side of muscle by giving the reciprocal inhibition so i will work on that opposite muscle means i will work on the reciprocal by the reciprocal inhibition where the antagonist muscle will give relief to the agonist muscle so this is also a very uh, beautiful explanation by sir that how we can treat the patient if there is a adhesion of myofascial or if there is a muscle uh, which are in a spasm or tightness how we can judiciously use the muscle energy technique not that yes just giving the stretch or yes so you have explained to the patient uh, just push just push no we have to do it with the properly how much contraction how much second either for the agonist either for the antagonist we have to decide everything according to the patient symptom either the tightness is there or the spasm is there either the lengthening of muscle is there the shortening of muscle is, is there or there is a adhesion so we have to differentiate between all these things after that in this picture i have just uh, showing that how i was treating the piriformis syndrome where the uh, the patient is having a pain the spasm in his buttock where the piriformis muscle so how we can give the muscle energy technique to the patient how we can check the barrier the internal rotation so these are the thing how we utilize these techniques in our daily clinic practice and we are getting a very best relief relief for our patient and they, i am feeling confident that yes i am going on a right way where i can treat my patient with the confidence yes if the patient is having a sciatic sciatica problem how i can treat because that time i have to keep in my mind because of sciatic nerve there is a articular dysfunction because of that the root from where the sciatic nerve is coming so i have to treat that spine also then if they are all along the course of now i have to check all these the tunnel sign everything i have to check the piriformis muscle also so these are the things how we can differentiate because we are learning from a proper way and a from a best teacher so that we can easily understand that what is the pain of my patient either the myofascial articular or neural so this is also myofascial release and the fascio muscular release because i have already explained you that fascio muscular release is a completely a active process where the patient also plays a major role by giving their active participation by contracting their muscles or after that we can instruct the patient to do the motor control and after that we release the fascia so that is also a very important thing how we can 
check the patient symptoms and uh, we can give the proper treatment to the patient so this is the myofascial release and in this you all people know about the myofascial but few maybe i think some of you maybe uh, know about the facio muscular release but some are maybe only the myofascial release but if i will differentiate between myofascial release and facio muscular release i will say that facio muscular release uh, gives a uh, very uh, quick uh, response because in this patient participation with the contraction of their particular area muscle they contract that muscle after that we release the fascia so they get better relief in a little time and this this is also the myofascial release and facio muscular release in this if there is a patient is having a tightness how we can release the fascia if there is a shortening the adductors pain and there is a pectoralis girdle there is a pectoralis minor syndrome the patient is not able to feel pain in the pectoralis area how we can release the fascia by giving the specific myofascial release and in this we can also instruct the patient to for the motor control for the core uh, the control that strength we can give for the tightening of the core muscles or sometimes we can train the patient for the because after, after covid uh, the breathing dysfunction is very common so inhale inhalation and exhalation plays a very major role when we treat our patient so it is also mandatory to uh, while treating the patient please take the history of their covid card or check either the obstructive or restrictive dysfunction they were having so according to that we can long inhalation or long exhalation in which situation we can give it is also very important because without that breathing you cannot treat the patient either you just release the fascia you give the glides but if you have not treating the cause what is the cause of their breathing dysfunction because of the covid so your treatment will not be in the end range so you have to check everything so while giving the treatment so in this pic i have shown that how we release like the patient is having a iit band how we can give the myofascial release on the iit band how we can differentiate between the tensor fascial atta and iit band with the knee knee uh, uh, knee extension and flexion we can differentiate or we can treat the patient with the myofascial release in this also we can add the urgents like istm cupping and the taping sometimes so there are so many options which we are learning this is after that myofascial we have a neural component how we check the patient uh, neural symptom by checking the tunnel signs palpation of all along the course of nerve how the patient is feeling the tunnel sign if there is a positive tunnel sign the patient having a symptom in the distal part so this is all come in the neural component we can palpate we can check and we can according to that in for if i am talking about the upper limb so we have a neurodynamic testing for upper limb uh, in that we check for the neurodynamic upper limb one uh, for the <clears throat> brachial plexus two for the median nerve three for the radial now and four for the ulna now according to the component which we added with the neck or the shoulder girdle and we can get the symptoms either the patient is having a, a, a dysfunction related to slider or the uh, tensioner according to their deeper structure or superficial structure in that the nerve dysfunction that is also for that we have a neuro manual therapy full course practitioner course which you can take and you can learn and upgrade yourself because after covid the neural cases are more than anything because of that the sitting posture or the uses of mobiles so the nerve compression nerve cases are more than the mus muscular or articular cases so it is as a physiotherapist it's our duty to upgrade ourselves for learning about the neural mobilization neural dyn neurodynamic how we can apply the neuro manual therapy in a better way to treat our patient and this also how we can take the patient the we can check for the sciatic now we can give the tensioner slider so this is this is a just small picks which i have added but we have a full range of neuro manual therapy which we can utilize in a proper way because for the sciatic nerve because every physiotherapist know uh, the sciatic nerve tension how we do the slr testing but there are some uh, who knows about that how we can add the slr derivatives how we can check the positioning itself with the distributing the component if the according to the symptom in which area we can add the component either the distal or proximal 
and in which also we can add how the uh, if there is a lumbar dura or there is a uh, slab, slab all the the neck flexion extension the dura uh, flexibility how we can check the traction of dura there are so many things which you can upgrade yourself for uh, better learning and for a better way of your clinical practice this is how we use the neurodynamic testing we use the gliding for the median nerve how we can check the upper limb neurodynamics test if there is a patient is having a cervical pain cervicogenic headache cervicobrachial pain syndrome there are a nerves for the uh, the upper cervical region the lesser and uh, greater occipital nerve how we can check it how we can palpate how we can give the nerve massage there also so that and we can add the cranio sacral therapy also from cranial to sacral how we can activate that particular region so that patient feel the comfortable they feel that yes i am feeling relaxed because that you have touched the right point where i was feeling the pain the my pain was going upwards uh, the to direction so how we can check these nerve greater and lesser occipital and even that we in that also we can give the myofascial release we can also use agents also this is a thoracic sympathetic sum because we know that autonomic disturbances are here so that time uh, we have to give the thoracic sympathetic sum and this also uh, we can influence upper limb we can keep the patient in a slouching position and just the shoulders are down keeping hand behind and just neck flexion and after that the patient is having a uh, symptoms in the left side we rotate the body and that time we can also give the mobilization to the uh, opposite side the ribs we can also give the mobilization so this is also the thoracic sympathetic slump test it also comes under the neuro manual therapy in this we have the passive neck flexion test for the uh, the neck dura and this is for the lumbar dura so this is these are the testings are very important and uh, i think uh, every physiotherapist should know about these testing because sometimes we stuck in the treatment the patient is not getting relief that time uh, it should be click in our mind yes we can give the thoracic because the area that there is a ganglion in the thoracic area the so in the posterior side so how we can treat that thoracic uh, sympathetic slum that their sensory and the motor part which coming from the our spinal cord the dura according to the ventral and dorsal rami how they affect the functioning of either the sensory or the motor according to the anterior or posterior horn of the spinal cord so i cannot miss these things also so please add on this thing and upgrade yourself with these techniques also and this is a very beautiful thing motor control retraining with uh, i will uh, say that uh, honestly i will say before joining the umpt i have i not a single thing i know about that pressure biofeedback how we can utilize it but when sir has explained it that what is the importance of motor control it is very important because of doing this motor control core stability that transfer abdominis multifitters by giving them a the contraction itself the patient feel the less pain because we know that the spine how the multifitters that the, all the long muscles which are going uh, simultaneously with the lumbar spine how it affects so if we give them the stability because of that stability and mobility of our spine plays a very major role and when we give the motor control retraining to the patient they just stuck their tummy inside or sometimes they uh, contraction to the gluteal muscle or if i am uh, treating the lower limb so the pelvic floor contraction itself gives a best relief for the symptoms of that time of pain if there is a inguinal pain so if there is a contraction the patient will contract hold that like a pressure of urine holding pressure so that time the patient will feel the less symptom so this is all that how the motor control from neck to uh, tailbone we can give the motor control it is very important for the lumbar spine stability or for the spine or for the cervical the deep cervical flexion we cannot miss this motor control even Uh, for the cranial nerves we treat our when we treat the cranial nerve also we can give the motor control by uh, explaining the patient to touch their tongue with the hard pellet and that time we can give the treatment to the hyoid bone we can give the treatment to the trachea esophagus there are so many things all the courses which we are learning in that this motor control we training and it is also 
uh, I think uh, from all the countries has uh, stamped it that the motor control retraining, it should be the first treatment for your treatment because this should be a first point when you are going to start your treatment. Even the patient is in ICU, is not able to perform their upper limb and lower limb that time itself the breathing the adding of the breathing exercises itself gives the best release or we can just uh, instruct the patient to just hold that we take your tummy inside just simply instruct they do that after that they can do some exercise also by in a lying line lying position so it is very important to understand about the motor control retraining and this pressure biofeedback which sir is showing in this this is also very uh, important and very a useful tool we can by this we can train the patient for the motor control and even not only for this also if there a patient is having a weakness in rotator cuff also we can as a functional neuromuscular stabilization we can keep this uh, cuff on that they are uh, behind their uh, on the their scapula and by keeping them with the ball and that time we can give a patient to give the contraction or we can that the movement for their rotator cuff, eccentric control, so uh, concentric action, eccentric action, according to that movement, uh, we can train the patient also. So after that, this manual therapy, we sometimes, uh, we also, this tools which gives us the uh, best result when this use, their users learn from the best guide. So these are the fascia guns, screw cupping, and the ISTM. These are also a very useful thing which we use as a helping hand, but for using them, our hand should be very confident and our hand should be in a proper guidance. Then we can use these tools. Otherwise, there is a no need to hold these tools in your hand for the worsening the symptom of your patient. This is the screw cupping. When there is a facial adhesion is there, the patient is uh, not uh, the, feeling the tightness in the fascia. So we can lift the fascia not for the hand or for all the joints, even uh, all around the joint also, patella also, there is a bursa that there also we can use this screw cupping, we can lift the fascia. So this screw cupping is also very important because in this, what is uh, going this, in this we can, uh, you can see is this, in this we can maintain the pressure and we can uh, lose the pressure also. So this is not like that, that cupping, it just we have kept it, so patient has to uh, feel tightness but in this we can lose it or we can try it if the patient is not feeling comfortable so we can just lose it or this is not the screw cupping not only the static we can use as a dynamic and even I can use in the functioning position also that I am giving the upper limb active testing so that time also I want to glide the nerves that time also I can give the uh, screw cupping with the functional movement also with the proximal to distal direction by using the paraffin gel so that the patient will not feel any pain and the friction on that their skin and we can use the screw cupping for the nerve treatment also if there is a patient is having a uh, cervical brachial pain syndrome where the all nerves are playing uh, a very major role so that time we can all along the course of the nerve or on the nerve also we can use this screw cupping to give the better result so it is a very useful tool we can use it in compared to the normal cupping that in that that we have to maintain the pressure and patient feel pain. But this is a very safer uh, tool. You can use it for your patient and it is not so expensive. Uh, I think every physiotherapist can afford this and keep in their toolbox for the better treatment. And patient also feel comfortable when there is a pain in upper trapezius. You can keep it there for some time as a static and sometime with the movement dynamic also. And patient after that patient feel, yes, my fascia is released. So it gives a very best result. So you can utilize this also. And this is IESTM. You all know about that. And uh, from uh, 1st of August uh, in our AMPT, the August month is very special for all the AMPT members. Uh, in that month, sir is going to give the very best course, the IESTM uh, course, the full 10 days course. You people can enroll and that is uh, the gift from the AMPT side. You can take that and that you can take the membership of AMPT. In this, there is a refundable piece you have to join. And after your course, if you will successfully attend all the classes, you will refund your fees also, sir will refund it. But it is for security that you will learn it properly for the 10 days. So don't miss this opportunity. 
because august is always gives a special offer so please don't miss this opportunity you can take the membership of ampt also and you can learn the iestm also you can learn that how we can give the release there is a metabolic drainage so if there is a layer by layer so like in the adductor muscles the patient is having a pain in a adductor muscle so how we can uh, release that muscles with a uh, iestm or there are uh, this the lateral hamstring medial hamstring so how we can give the iestm there so there are so many things like it band and rectus the tensor fasciae lateral so there iestm we can use so there are so many indications so many uh, uh, cautions so we can use it very easily and we can learn it properly and then we can apply on our patient and this is the fascia gun that is also very useful for the massage for the nerve massage or all other joints and uh, this is also we have a course so that we can know that where we have to give the which uh, how much pressure we have to give or which head of that particular fascia gun we have to use for the joint for the muscles and for the spine so this is also a very useful thing and this is in our ampt we have learned the cranio the, the cranio neuro manual therapy this is also a very best approach of ampt where we treat the cranial nerve you can never believe this that how we can give the neuro manual therapy for the cranial nerve this is also a very uh, and this is my very small patient who was the three year when he was three years old he was not able to speak a single word after giving that glossopharyngeal and hypoglossal nerve massage or i have given the sensory uh, uh, therapy to this according to the cranial nerves which are uh, associated for the speech or swallowing the baby was able to speak and now he is a completely a chatterbox so this is also that time we were learning the cranial neuro manual therapy and i have used on that baby and the baby was mother was so happy that uh, it's a miracle and really it works wonderfully and i have talked to my uh, his pediatric also and he is also very confident that he was saying that your treatment has given him a very right direction because you have palpate you have given the treatment to the glossopharyngeal nerve and the tongue protrusion and the giving the sen some sense uh, uh, myofascial release on tongue also If with the by giving in this i have not added all the pics but it is little i have added to so that i can understand you can understand that how we are learning from ampt and this is the neural assessment with the loading of uh, neural nerve neurodynamic position for the trigeminal nerve where the the all the nerves with the trigeminal or either the ophthalmic maxillary and mandible the, the trigeminal neuralgia how we can give the myofascial release with the muscle energy technique in the neurodynamic itself in the position you can see that the limb in the neurodynamic position and that in the offloading position and in this the mouth the retraction and the protraction retrusion and protrusion sorry and we have used so there are so many things we are learning from ampt not only for the muscles joints and articular and neural we are treating the cranial nerve also and we are treating the osteocranium also and this is the for the maxillary nerve i have already explained that how we go inside the mouth and we can palpate that uh, nerve so this is also a very uh, useful techniques which we use there some uh, elizabeth i don't know name was coming is doing this yes ma'am elizabeth is removed now you can reload the slide screen share disable then again share this time i got the name so this is the cranial neuro manual therapy for maxillary now how we can go inside Uh, the mouth and then there is a orbital bucket you want to drink water no no sir fine yes ma'am so this is that uh, the branch of trigeminal nerve maxillary nerve if the patient is having a trigeminal neuralgia how we can treat it by giving the neck rotation for the neuro offloading of the nerve and then by going inside the mouth 
and then there is a division of maxillary nerve called the infraorbital bouquet and we can give the massage and we can keep our hand on the outside and then we can give it uh, from outside finger we can give it and by keeping hand inside finger inside so in this also we can instruct the patient to keep your tongue to touch with the hard palate for the deep cervical plexus so there are so many things we can do for the patient because we can never say to the patient that this is not uh, my profile that i will treat you for this dysfunction i want that if the patient is coming uh, to me that i can say yes i can treat you it's my either there is a malignancy or there is a some another inflammation infection cases that is not in our book in that also we can if, if we can not treat that proximal part we can give treatment to the distal part also so that the patient can feel comfortable so it is it can be happen only because of that we are learning from ampt where there is a big basket of courses and the explanation of from sir side is so huge we cannot understand and we cannot even imagine that sir how he makes every session so remarkable so we learn so many new things in every session so this is uh, i have given you a some picture about that how we can even treat the cranial nerves osteocranium even skull how the movement of in, in inside the skull takes a place that is also our very beautiful course the osteocranial neuromedullary therapy where the bones the ethmoid bones sphenoid bone how their movement their uh, mechanism plays a very major role in the dysfunction of body face alignment or the body misalignment how this sir, all the uh, facial uh, bones the uh, frontal bone zygomatic maxillary all the bones plays a major role where the temporal parietal how we can check the rhythm of that cerebrospinal fluid rhythm we can use that tunic fork so there are so many things so we cannot say that we cannot treat any dysfunction we can treat everything if it is related to our body so that because as a we are a body scientist we are a movement scientist so we our role is to give the better movement to the patient our role is to protect their body from their dysfunction either their joints are stiff or their muscles are tight or their nerve in a compression or there is a entrapment of nerve Uh, i will not restrict my hand for touching to my patient i will give them a proper treatment so it is whole about the musculoskeletal disorder with the full i hope i have uh, given a uh, right uh, view to all of you and if you want this was that manual therapy part was there is a uh, some pictures i have added because of the shortage of time but if you want to really learn it and upgrade yourself so don't think twice start not from tomorrow start from today only and take uh, take better opportunity join ampt academy and you can take the courses which will takes you a better place you will definitely feel that your hands are in a better confidence for when you are keeping on your patient body so your hands will speak that yes that my patient is having a pain in this position so i can differentiate between the pain of my patient because we have a pain neuroscience also which we can learn it from umbd so my this presentation fully dedicated to uh, my best teacher dr santosh sir because of him uh, i think we can never think all these things because sir the way of teaching is really i will appreciate sir effort how he makes the models how he gives us a proper view of each topic for our better understanding from pathomechanics to like to biomechanics to manual therapies nothing is left in any session everything sir covered in a such a right way or in a sequel manner so thank you so much sir and uh, thank you all the participant who has are listening me patiently and uh, i really, really uh, see your queries how much we can clarify them and we can give you a better view the sir is here and uh, i will also add my uh, inputs on that so thank you so much everyone and thank you sir yes sir over to you sir right ma'am slide can be closed yes yes sir you want to switch to the phone no no i am sitting here only okay
in chat allow me to read the questions yeah so nobody is going to type any question in the chat now whoever has typed until now only are eligible um how do i disable that because i've been announcing that so many times that uh, chat all are saying thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you ma'am okay so now we disabled the chat and we are ready now to see for uh, right the questions how do we go with the questions yes um, what was the first question which is visible no there's only ss yes, yes, and good evening ss yes, yes, yes. good evening all this to the everyone jyoti mentioning i don't have voice uh, okay dr anup sir's first question was how to address the stiffness and tightness after fracture or post operatively with manual therapy uh, stiffness is another term which is for the synovial fluid viscosity um what is called as increased viscosity so the oily synovial fluid has become like a thick gum okay so what happens is the movements are not free so that is stiffness if the same in muscle if that's come as a stiffness it can come if there is reduced blood circulation to the muscle like how we have for ischemic compartment syndromes where there are muscle stiffness tightness comes in muscle which is reversible shorter period of time we can reverse it you just work the muscle the muscle becomes flexible when it is tight you just exercise the muscle it will become relaxed but when the capsule tightness is there you activate the muscle it will not increase the range of motion okay madam was telling about that reciprocal inhibition the muscle energy technique that is patient has a spasm here this side patient comes like this ah uh, i am having severe pain like that you activate the opposite side muscles antagonist activation and the patient will tell yeah now my pain is less again further and further you can activate 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 and the subject will be able to come out of muscle spasm that is reciprocal inhibition okay that means you are using a reciprocal or antagonistic muscle to inhibit the muscle in spasm so it's a very very good technique you, you need to understand the muscle testing uh, all of us are thinking manual muscle testing which is like uh, in uh, syllabus or in our college whatever that is taught is manual muscle testing but unfortunately uh it's not true see there are situations where hamstrings can be tight at the hip but they can be lengthened at the knee so you need to know whether tightness of the hamstrings is at the hip or at the knee and then medial hamstrings versus lateral hamstrings and also what is called as the synergies differentiating that for example biceps you supinate and elbow flexion whereas brachioradial is mid prone and elbow flexion whereas brachialis pronation and then elbow flexion and biceps you will involve the shoulder also because it is crossing the shoulder joint long head and short head short head means you will give shoulder flexion long head means you have to give shoulder abduction every muscle is differentiable and we have simplified that muscle testing whole upper limb muscle testing 3 hours full video whole lower limb muscle testing 3 hours and trunk ribs diaphragm oromotor face muscles spinal muscles testing 3 hours so muscle strength testing specialist we have a course like that you cannot even imagine i can guarantee 100% money return challenge 
if somebody is not feeling satisfied with any of the courses of aompt will return your fee fully we are not doing the courses for money we are doing the courses only for excellence and that to make india the global superpower in physio knowledge that rather than relying on international people whatever they tell it's correct you just do international courses in goa you become an expert no indian can be the expert every one of you is uh, eligible to be an expert global expert everyone should develop new new techniques every clinician when you are treating patients you would have modified some technique and you would have used and you would have seen that the patient is improving better you would have combined some two techniques some people would have kept the hot pack and with the stimulation or with the ift and the hot pack and people might have improved so remember to develop your new techniques and when you develop a new technique publish it as a case study that the patient improved and after that future people will do the research and then it builds the evidence what we call it as practice based evidence where we develop the techniques new new techniques it's not like evidence based practice somebody has already tested and we have to use it no for us we have to test for our population we have to do you need to have that creativity in your mind to develop newer and newer techniques you can develop that only if you have the knowledge of patho mechanics so that is what we are emphasizing the language of communication between the human body of the patient and the hands of the physical therapist that is patho mechanics is not biomechanics so remember we treat the patho mechanics we cannot treat the pathology because pathology is treated by physicians and another thing physician treats the disease the therapist treats the patient who has the disease so our focus is on the human being not on the disease patient may have osteoarthritis patient may have a frozen shoulder but for us he has to use his arm for all his daily activities work recreation sports or sleep disturbances every level we try to treat the patient the whole 24 hours the patient should be happy that is quality of life so don't try to focus on treating the structures you are identifying the structure because you want to know how long the structure will take the time to heal for example muscle takes 3 weeks to heal a ligament takes 6 weeks to heal including the remodeling a capsule takes 3 months to heal bone takes 3 to 6 months we know fracture healing and remodeling and that too is different between spine and extremities spine takes a longer duration to heal because most of our activities we are loading the spine so please understand the importance of prefixing doctor everybody will think i have to prefix doctor if you are strong in your knowledge if you have a humble nature to communicate with the physician don't be arrogant don't think that you know more than the physician physician knows more in their field you don't know the surgical anatomy you only know the mechanical anatomy the functional anatomy so you should respect them medicine is a senior profession from medicine only we are evolved as a physical therapy as a this is a separate profession it is our parent body medicine is if you are all working together like how the dentists work with the physicians there will not be any conflict at all unnecessarily do not have arrogance remember that more you are humble more you are great more you share your knowledge with everybody more you become better more excellence comes so dedicate your time to becoming more and more excellent and ensure that every extra effort what you do do not do it for marks 
do not do it for whether somebody has to appreciate no do it as a this is my way of life i am not going to compensate or compromise i will be the best i will learn from the best no compromises maybe somebody is teaching at a lesser fee somebody may be taking at a free webinar whichever you might think even lot of information is there in youtube you can just search you can try to see it leisure you can just watch videos but only a dedicated teacher even a free video also you will learn otherwise the free videos are just advertisement videos marketing and promotional videos for the courses and one most important thing is we have become more mathematical i have seen a established resource person in manual therapy he is advertising his course like i am teaching 270 techniques what is that with the number of techniques can you see my little finger with the uh, distal interphalangeal joint so i give a pressure like this and i bend my finger this is one technique i give the pressure here and then i bend it. this is another technique i give pressure here on the anterior aspect and then i bend it. this is another technique i give it on the medial aspect and then i give the bending four techniques are over now in the same little finger i give a pressure like this compressing the little finger and i am asking the subject to bend and straighten fifth technique distraction sixth technique okay then after that in the little finger tendon i can glide in the distal phalanx or i can glide in the middle phalanx i can release the oblique ligament here or the collateral ligament of the distal interphalangeal joint i can release deep transverse friction okay and then because it is a little finger i can do the ulnar nerve neurodynamic test because we know ulnar nerve neurodynamic test component is like this okay how many techniques you want with just one minute we can show 100 techniques everything is a technique only if a patient is having neck pain patient is having swallowing problems patient may be telling that speech problems with headache in a neck pain patient when my pain becomes more i am not able to speak for a longer time or i am getting repeated cough you will be thinking neck pain i will treat it. headache you go to the neurologist for cough or for a speech problem go to a speech therapist no you should see whether the neck is related to this that example only madam highlighted in the presentation that a patient may have neck range limited or neck is paining ask the patient to keep the tongue on the hard palate and then do the movement the same spasm won't come ask the patient to keep the eyes open do that spasm comes keep the eyes closed now no spasm there are patients who have neck pain because of visual problems because they are not able to focus so they go into a wrong posture for them you close your eyes not you ask the patient to close the eyes so they do the movement then the pain disappears understood and the same way for uh, tongue for speech okay so i ask the subject to keep the tongue to the teeth either on to my right or to my left i keep to my right the range of motion is difficult i keep my tongue to the left it's better easier every patient will show difference in responses you are not doing a cervical spine examination you are examining the patient and also understand that a patient who complains of pain in the neck and also in the hand ask them to what is called as i'm just showing the hand because it has to be visible in front of me if i keep in the side my hand will disappear 
okay magic but uh, what i am expecting you to do is when you do just to do the movement okay and you find the range of motion restriction is there or spasm is there or pain is there next you do intrinsic muscles activity lumbricals intrinsic plus you know metacarpophalangeal joint 90 degree and ip joint extended this is the action of lumbricals from extended position lumbricals strengthening not a smiley ball only ball will smile patient will not smile after 3 months also nothing will happen okay so remember that lumbrical exercises is this so i keep this in this position my right hand and then you see my flexibility how it is my fingers are straight and i am lying down i do this versus intrinsic muscle activity and then i am doing this because people who type on the keyboard people who text on the phones who are getting neck pain is because of intrinsic muscle weakness in the hand that they get the neck pain please understand the seriousness of whether it is carelessness or ignorance carelessness is you don't know anything so you have not done anything you don't know who is the best so you did not join any courses and learn ignorance is you know who is the best and still you are not doing the courses so this is what determines what you are blessed with because if you genuinely work with the best you will become the best but if you are just thinking that international certificate is valid or my junior is telling senior is telling this course is best so take it i bet upon every provider whatever whoever is giving manual therapy courses and certificates share me the sample of that certificate i will tell you why that certificate is not valid every organization in india and i will also show you what is the difference in the aompt certificate that makes it to be valid this is the effort that we do that the world has recognized aompt and we need to make india the best place because without working for india there is no point in being an indian organization that is the obligation we have to repair our home first then only we can repair the neighbors or repair the outer areas so please understand take the courses with the guarantee i am giving you openly money back guarantee and also do not think you are a student you will learn later because you know how the teachers are teaching every teacher is not competent enough every principal is not competent enough that is the only reason why these manual therapy topics are not in the syllabus even if it is in the syllabus the way the depth that is taught is very less joint mobilization is there passive movement is there in first year itself but nobody teaches maitland concept in that nobody teaches mckenzy concept in that mckenzy is about the passive movements only when mobilization is there people can teach maligan also but nobody is teaching manipulation comes under the mobilization because fifth grade of mobilization is thrust manipulation so people can teach we teach massage in the bpt syllabus instead of that myofascial release can be taught instead of that deep transverse friction massage can be taught for decurrence disease whatever is useful that we can incorporate in that old topic if it is electrotherapy we can concentrate on high power laser we can concentrate on shock wave therapy extra corporeal shock wave therapy or pulsed electromagnetic energy rather than keeping the disc electrode of short wave diathermy and teaching for one month suspension therapy nobody is using but why is it in the syllabus <coughs> aquatic therapy is better people who have knee arthritis and unable to walk because of pain 
put them in aquatic therapy don't push them make them to walk uh, make sure that every method deserves its importance but getting certified in those techniques and then you are selecting the patients which patient is suitable which patient is not suitable don't you give the technique for example dry needling how many of you prefer to have needling give an sr no how many of you allow that somebody does a dry needling for your upper trapezius after knowing that the adverse effect of a wrong technique is pneumothorax the apical segment of the upper lobe of the lungs puncture tension pneumothorax that is the adverse event after knowing that how many of you will agree for okay do the dry needling on me upper trapezius please answer yes or no <clears throat> because we think that doing the needling makes us an expert we are forgetting the fact that what are the risks involved in that hazards of that is more than the benefits yes tell yes or no on chat okay i have disabled that uh, unfortunate just hold on and captain open chat so you can type yes or no anybody tells yes for example when you are doing the dry needling courses you are given a consent form when you are enrolling for the course that you will become a model and whatever happens the teacher is not responsible the signing is taken what is called as medical indemnity form after that people are learning the needling then they think that do the needle put the needle with the glove it looks like a surgeon and the needle looks like a syringe so you become a doctor without knowing the fact that dry needling is banned banned b a n n e d i will show you in us itself dry needling is banned you see the wikipedia dry needling you will get in every country what are the legal ones but in india full business of workshops of dry needling why commercial aspects and we have that mob psychology 10 people are running for a course 10000 people will run without knowing why they are 10 people are running okay and then you see chiropractic and osteopathy that is the best example of how we can actually make a fool out of ourselves because physiotherapy is much more advanced than the osteopathy and chiropractic osteopathy and chiropractic are roadside techniques which was performed 5000 years back by our ancestors with the thrust techniques now again for that you are paying money and you are learning to become trained technicians and you think that are becoming an osteopath is an expert no because there is no understanding of what is the pathomechanics in the body only structural focus just to observe touch and palpate uh, give the thrust this side sound is not coming this side you give lower cervical not coming upper cervical you give somewhere something sound will come what is the use of that we don't know that if we do this we'll get sound for having hand pain or wrist pain if somebody does this you will tell that my mom itself will do why i have to go to a physician or a therapist these courses are not at all listed in the ministry of health and ministry of education in government of india osteopathy and chiropractic it's not under physiotherapy it is under manual therapy so you should see that they are different profession you can't do those courses and tell that i am a certified osteopath no you are a physical therapist who got certified in a osteopathic technique you can't tell certified osteopath certified chiropractor no unless you do doctor of chiropractic 
you can't tell you are a chiropractor doctor of osteopathy then you can tell you are an osteopath but these these two also india it is not valid so better be aware of the law of the land nobody will come in your support when you are stuck in problem when a patient puts the legal suit that they got the pneumothorax or they got some cancer upper lobe of the lung after 3 years the patient will tell 3 years before i took dry needling from dr shahid well, how will sir defend and the resource person mentions this also in the certificate that you are liable you are eligible to use dry needling under your own risk after teaching the technique the certificate they provide like this why that thing you have to learn if they don't take the risk it's same like our covid vaccine you take that vaccine side effects nobody is responsible you are only responsible not the company not the government and what has happened first second third fourth doses will be continuing like anything people who have the fear of death will run they stand in the queue to take the injections but those who fear only god fear of conscience need not be afraid of anything because they do good not only for themselves everybody they think and do good only more than that what has to save when your thought and actions are good your karma will save you and protect you like anything you would have seen that when you are helping people you would have helped your friends in your exam even if a question comes out of syllabus suddenly that moment you would have got the thought and you would have written something answer you would not have studied the topic at all but you will write pages on the topic many people who are sincere and helping your friends you will understand this i never studied i don't remember at all every whole class is telling that i don't remember we cannot attend that question only it was a compulsory question but you will say something i wrote two three pages even you cannot remember to tell what you wrote also but that moment your fingers will write because it is your blessing from the supreme power that you have done the good for others do not be selfish when it comes to knowledge and ensure that you don't share books you don't share the dvd all this for learning materials you share knowledge don't share the materials share the knowledge so take home message make sure that you should be patient centered be the what is the problem in the patient how this problem can be interlinked and then see that how you can combine all the techniques for that patient if a guest visits the house guest do not like tea you give coffee with the tea they want pakoda or with coffee they have they want samosa it is the guest choice you are you cannot tell that i am expert in making tea so you have tea only guest will not be happy same like that you should be trained in all the techniques but don't be technique centered concentrate on the patient combine the techniques give together because all structures are working together when i am talking my tongue is moving my jaw is moving my neck is moving the air pressures are changing between pharynx and uh, larynx and also the intrathoracic pressure and also intra abdominal pressure and most importantly the vascularity arterial venous everything is changing lymphatic human body is not like our physiotherapist one patient one therapist is treating one patient you will not even go to see what the therapist is doing patient will come next day therapist is on leave you will tell that therapist is on leave you come later patient will tell anybody else can treat me na you will tell no 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 that sir only knows so let him come 
that is discrimination if every one of us knows everything you know that whether it is professor senthil treats dr sharad treats or shahid treats or shweta is treating they will do that level of standards acceptable to treat a human being that is standardization of quality this does not come from council this comes from a self determination all of us should do justice that i should not cheat i don't know means i have to upgrade if i have to learn learn from the best no compromises and same way if i have to retain the learning i should practice on the patient sincerely and most importantly i should share my knowledge with others so that the knowledge stays with me forever this is the reason why teachers do not read books but they take classes automatically the best teachers who are strict in your college those teachers are not lenient they don't come for they don't encourage you people to cut the cakes for their birthday they will not come to your parties they will not dance with the students but those are the teachers who are bothered about whether you are improving or not whether you are genuinely becoming a best physical therapist or not but you think that people who chat on whatsapp with emojis and instagram uh, they are following and they are liking and they are putting some videos dancing videos those faculties are the best no remember this same way sincere students sometimes they ask questions other batchmates will make fun of them hey why are you asking question why are you buttering the teacher we think that you know the student being more sincere also other people tell them that you are buttering the teacher and trying to suppress that student do not think anything because lion does not bother about the rats lion is a lion tiger is a tiger it does not bother about the cats whether you want to be a cat or tiger think if you want to be a fake cat you can put paint on your body to look like a tiger cub and you can show off like that but you cannot withstand for long be a genuine tiger cub rather than a fake cat which has painted itself like a tiger cub and every one of you has the potential to be the best of yourself only if you are apple you have to be the best apple if you are orange you have to be the best orange if you are lemon you have to be the best lemon lemon should not think that i have to become orange to mimic the other person making the other person you cannot become the best you have to compare with yourself and compete with yourself to become the best so understand this uh, lacune people are different levels they are selfish i am also selfish i am the maximum selfish person in the profession of physiotherapy in india because i want whole india to be the best no compromise <coughs> so please understand that and i want the world to turn back to india and invite indian people to conduct the workshops in uh, every country so um <clears throat> always ensure that don't aim for perfection nobody can be perfect everybody does mistake if somebody tells that you are doing a mistake tell them thank you for correcting me i will do it better don't tell who are you to correct me i am correct only that is not knowledge that is foolishness <clears throat> if you are not learning it is not knowledge <clears throat> how do you learn mistakes makes you to learn if you are afraid of making mistakes you cannot learn if the child is afraid of falling the child cannot walk child is afraid of people seeing at it and uh, uh, shouting whatever the child cannot walk 
whoever knows how to ride a cycle you would have definitely fallen five times because i fell down five times when i learned okay so everybody has that falling falling you cannot avoid you the sooner you get up from the fall you are the boss because starting line do not determine a success finishing line determines the success when you are dying how the world knows your name if sandhya shukla is there means when she is dying how the world will see sandhya shukla has what she has done in her life that is her achievement in life we come into the world crying when we go the world has to cry parents crying spouse crying and all only 2 3 months only after that they will see where is the property whose name it is written only your photo that flowers will be there anniversary they will celebrate death anniversary after you die people have to celebrate your birth anniversary that such a wonderful person was born and he did selflessly so much of work like that they should know you that is your responsibility to mankind and if not for anything just think only one thing now the covid third wave is crossed we are approaching the fourth wave what made god to keep you alive when millions of people have died all around the world why are you alive that means dog god has a bigger purpose for you that you should make a better world by being alive you deserve to be alive your gratitude to god should be i will make a better world my patients my batchmates my teachers everybody or my colleagues when they talk to me i cannot speak ill about my mom my mother nobody will speak ill about their own mother same like that none of you you take a oath that none of us will speak ill about physiotherapy because it is your mother profession it's not some other profession if somebody is telling that i have done everything in physiotherapy nothing is happening means first of all i am telling the list of courses in aompt is more than 200 courses are there first let them learn what is physiotherapy from aompt after that if they tell patient is not improving the same patient we i will do a tele rehabilitation online and that patient will if they are not improving i will stop teaching at all forever open challenge and i am also telling if any international expert can explain anything that is better than what is given in aompt the same content open challenge i'll give all the courses free whoever is doing better but if they cannot it's like a practical exam a debate like one resource person doing another resource person doing we need a resource person exams people who are teaching should face an exam to see how they are performing first then only they can teach they are teaching senseless knowledge and people are getting driven away like a mog maya that mob psychology you think that they are all legends see their credentials you will find when you go back the truth where they what they actually learned nobody checks the certificates of the resource persons they simply put germany belgium certified europe australia who is checking those certificates please be aware and be well informed genuine people only can make you genuinely the best and this webinar is primarily focused to enlighten that manual therapy we have lot of options musculoskeletal disorders whole body it is there the most important thing is the impairment based reasoning articular myofascial and neural and the next is mechanism based reasoning that is central peripheral autonomic nociceptive or neuropathic or even psychological
so similar perspectives but there are some differences and challenges how we individualize for each and every patient the patient itself coming on first day versus second day they are different and somebody telling pain give the ultrasound here somebody telling pain give the ultrasound here another day pain here so give the ultrasound here this is technician without even knowing that what is the structure which is paining whether it is the collagen tissue healing phase whether ultrasound is going to help the reorientation of the collagen otherwise why are you applying the ultrasound and the same way that is technician anybody can apply the electrodes you would have seen in the clinic that there are some sweepers who are cleaning the clinic they only will keep the short wave they will keep the hot pack because they are all only techniques but most importantly if you have to be a clinician it is examination it's not the ppt exam what you pass it is examining each and every patient you examine the patient you learn from every patient otherwise you are only doing business you just want to treat i am not telling that don't give packages give package one month package you give two modalities you keep patient will come one month you learn money earn no problem but do justice to what is the problem in the patient do i know that or not whether the tissues are favorably getting healed or not can i make the patient to squat on day 1 when the patient has come with a difficulty to squat am i just putting the wax bath and giving mobilization and telling them not to squat or i am making them to squat on day 1 itself that is treatment if a patient tells i am unable to squat you tell them don't squat is not treatment that squatting has to be enabled there unless it is a fracture dislocation of a big macro trauma you can't permit the patient to perform that activity otherwise functional approach is very important patient is having pain on weight bearing should be treated in weight bearing not in the bed patient having pain on stair climbing means it should be stair climbing and in that only treatment has to be given all manual therapy techniques whether it is strengthening or is it releases or mobilization techniques it should be given in that functional position because how can treatment given in supine be effective when the patient is standing there are a lot of changes between supine and standing kinetics and kinematics so treat the functional deficit of the patient and make them functionally free do not focus on structures don't keep showing to the patient the bone and the joint tell them that your joint is out of place your spine has got locked nothing will happen a clicking sound will come patient will tell better three times you will do after that they will get fracture of the pars intraarticularis no pain will be there because spine has become unstable it's not locked spine has become unstable spine because clicking clicking what will happen daily you just click when you wake up you see after that katak katak sound will come cracking sound will automatically come and one day you will just turn after that uh, my neck became like this i am not able to turn it will get stuck like that because till then you have been doing katak katak people who get rheumatoid arthritis you ask them habitually they will be always doing this and if their hand is cracked and there is no sound friend will be sitting friends hand they will hold and they will start doing you would have had your friends also doing that okay these people only get rheumatoid arthritis and then i am not able to hold anything see everything please understand that human body wants to be normal we as clinicians should identify what is the path to become normal 
and we have to enable the patient to get on to the track it is not through techniques it is through individualizing for each and every patient by combination of techniques i also tell the other example the techniques are like individual masala like chili powder the garam masala the turmeric powder or salt oil okay these are all the different techniques we have to combine all the techniques and then we have to make the sabji or the dish for food so that food only we can eat individually chili powder you cannot eat if somebody tells you take chili powder in the night this problem will go chili powder in the morning that problem will disappear chili powder with water this problem will disappear chili powder with milk this problem will disappear all in all for all the problem this chili powder is the only treatment if somebody teaches you any courses like that they are not teaching you a course they are teaching you marketing product marketing every problem is cured by this technique you just do this technique patient will become normal this is the magic bullet no you are underestimating the god's creation techniques are invented by man human body was created by god so understand that techniques are at your disposal you have to combine and you have to give you don't make the technique as the boss and you don't become a technician rather than becoming a clinician because clinician is examines the patient clinic clinician is differential diagnosis clinician is the understanding of the pathomechanics and clinician is will ensure that two patients of frozen shoulder both are treated totally different because the patients are different that is clinician if you keep the same heart pack same ultrasound for both the patients you are a technician whether you are there or not there clinic other people also can apply the same techniques so ensure that today's session is an eye opener i will give certificate to all the people who are present here the 20 participants i will take the screenshot of the names also ensure that every one of you take a screenshot of your own question what you have put in the chat chat so these two definitely and all 20 will receive the e certificate of course i am uh, through the double login i have a phone here okay so which is and um, so 18 uh, participants will receive their e certificates and ensure that aompt is there to hold your hands walk along with you to show you the path of realization of your own excellence okay we are not going to make you excellent we are going to make you realize your excellence okay for that only this academy is there and it is my duty for my boss the knowledge i am a servant of knowledge i believe that i am a honest servant of knowledge so ensure that we will make a better world so god bless all of you good luck to all of you i appreciate all of you being present till the very end of the webinar which itself shows that it's not for certificate it is for the respect that somebody is doing with sincerity ritu madam making the effort to make such a long presentation uh, any of the free webinar nobody takes beyond 40 minutes but in spite of being a free webinar this much this uh, sincerity is there in making us to know the latest developments and more important than the content or the techniques or anything it is how we manage ourselves as a physical therapist that is important so that is the glory of being a physical therapist so <clears throat> good luck stay smiling keep inspiring each other and ensure that make every moment of your life to count that your student should perform better than you then only you are the best teacher because they got the best teacher which you don't have so that should be the mentality of teachers 
senior and junior also your junior should learn maximum from you because they have the best senior which you don't have keep this in mind it is like husband and wife only husband tells husband can never blame the choice of the wife your sari selection is bad you are not choosing this one properly like that because husband also is one of that selection only okay he has to remember that and same way the wife cannot blame or appreciate the choices of the husband because wife also is a choice of the husband okay so that is the lighter side of the story but to ensure that everybody take things lightly ensure that the strongest people keep smiling amidst all the challenges and work sincerely somebody asked muscular dystrophy can we treat or not okay even if the question is can we cure the muscular dystrophy can is this curable or not i will tell only one answer if you don't do anything the child dies at 15 years but if you give physical therapy child lives till 35 years what does the parent want child to die at 15 years or child to live till 35 years which parents will tell i don't want the child to kill the child because it is muscular dystrophy i don't know maybe after 40 years more senseless people can come immoral people can come government also one uh, extreme category they can put some any new policies but make sure that the individual moral values never it will change it is our duty as a healthcare professional to 200% what happens that is in his hand what is in my hand i have to do fully i can't think about a student will pass or fail and then i teach no i have to teach 100% the student passing or failing is in their own hands don't think about the outcome don't think about the income think about your growth the process of excellence how you are building and i bet upon the glory of knowledge whoever has gone behind knowledge money has come behind following them money will beg behind you please take me please take me you don't have to go behind money if you are going after excellence money will come after you same way as if you are doing extra courses whether you will extra you will earn or not if you don't do any extra courses and you don't become any extra you cannot earn extra there are physios who are charging 50 rupees and 100 rupees because they know that much only but there are also physios who are charging 5000 and 10000 rupees per session that is the difference between a cat and a tiger if you don't respect yourself don't expect the others to respect you don't tell a less salary because you want a job rather you create your own setting and do a sincere work if your hands are not good you create an app you create a website for physiotherapy make the people register and you can earn money so please understand do your best the way you want to do it not because others are doing people ask me which is the best college for mpt i tell them only one thing i am hungry i am asking you which is the best hotel which is the best restaurant that i can have how can you say what is best restaurant i like biryani means i should go to a restaurant which is having the biryani i like fried rice i have to go to a chinese restaurant which has the fried rice so it depends on the student to choose that i will choose a college where the best teacher is there because lab and equipments anywhere it can be there degree certificate will be there 
fees less or more everything is all everywhere possible but the best teacher only is very rare to find so choose your destiny depending upon that if your parents have brought you up it is your responsibility to make them feel proud that yes i have a daughter like this and my daughter is famous all around the world for her physical therapy not for her looks if you want to be famous for your looks enter into modeling enter into movie industry we are very happy that a physical therapist is winning miss world miss universe but don't do that in the clinic patient should not see you as a girl patient should see you as a doctor remember that sometimes these things are also major issues not only in musculoskeletal because neurological you see that patients worship you as god whatever little improvement you produce they are like oh you have given me life i am again able to eat they will be very thankful neurosurgeon is like i have done the surgery but physical therapist only can make you normal they also give full respect cardio pulmonary you are almost like doctor only 100% with the stethoscope mask gloves uh, ventilators nurses you know you are like one celebrity life and death you can resuscitate a patient you can intubate you can do anything with cardio respiratory but you don't know whether patient will be alive or not tomorrow okay so you need a strong uh, will power to expose to death and all okay yesterday patient was smiling today the patient died okay so you should accept that reality cardio pulmonary patient will not tell anything okay if they smile in the icu that itself is a big reciprocation neuro they will worship ortho only they will come and the patient will tell with musculoskeletal disorders they will tell do some massage na when you touch i am feeling better sir your hands is some magic is there i am feeling better because they are coming for comfort they are not coming for necessity or they are not coming for life and death they are having pain they don't want the pain many people are living with the pain so pain is not a big problem don't treat the pain treat the patient what is caused the pain find out that and treat that so i will keep on talking but most importantly how to keep on learning okay that is the question which your conscience will ask and you need to see that today why is this day this opportunity and this much intensity you have got that learning you have got the inspiration so today is the turning point of my life i am not going to allow my life which is from tomorrow to be the same as how it was till yesterday and that is in my hand and it is my responsibility my decision makes my life because from aympt you can learn anatomy also you can learn biomechanics also you can learn pathomechanics muscle testing everything separate 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 you can learn the whole bpt curriculum is there with the aomp you can do as courses neuro sports cardio pulmonary everything no institute in the world provides this wide variety of courses of course thanks to all the participants that it is the world's largest academy manual therapy academy that is aomp and the world's top rated five star rating for our courses and most importantly world's only academy which has provided more than 230 free webinars in the history of covid 230 free webinars this is 233 and you know each webinar is not just one hour we have crossed 500 hours of streaming for free webinars and we have crossed 2500 hours of streaming for our courses is not a video streaming we are talking live on the screen that is the extent of effort that we do to make ourselves better and also to make the world better so see you all keep in touch uh, international students they all know that 
Okay, I have taken the courses for Nigeria. I have taken courses for 28 uh, chapters of AOMPT. Indians, the Kudumbu, the family, stay connected and stay tuned, not just for the free webinars, certification courses. And you will find the world is world of difference when you do the courses. Because if a free webinar can make you know this extent, imagine the extent that you can learn from a certification course. Right? So see you all. Bye-bye. Take care. Enjoy your Saturday evening. I know many of the students will have their own ways to enjoy the Saturday evening. But you have got a Saturday evening which is going to make after 20 years, every Saturday will be a celebration for you. That is the life or after 10 years, 10 years at least. Right? So good luck. Bye-bye. See you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Without Ritu, I'm telling Hare Krishna, we never stop the webinar. Hmm? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, all the participants. They are the who are still sitting there and listening patiently. So I think they deserve their best and they have to take the decision to join the best academy to make themselves a best and they can learn more from UMPT because I can always say this is the platform where we can board our train. It's the right platform, not a, it's my personal experience. Watch what we are learning from last two and a half year. It's like a post-graduation we are doing with the UMPT, with MPT. So the people who are doing MPT, I think uh, just sake of the degree, but what we are learning, it's it's very, I will say I am very much feeling blessed that we are getting so much knowledge from you and the wonderful uh, participants who are sitting and listening. And definitely uh, they are clinician, they are student, they will upgrade their self for their betterment so that they can also say that, yes, I have healed the pain of my patient. So good luck to all of you. Take your right decision. Join AMPT. And uh, I always mention that this is the August month is the special month for uh, our AMPT. We are sir, give so many courses, some free courses, membership. So you can, don't miss this opportunity. Take this right step from tomorrow onwards, the uh, day after tomorrow that August is starting. So take a right step, join the courses and upgrade yourself. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, everyone. Yes, sir. Right. Uh, so, so we stop the session. I have switched from the yes, laptop sir. to the phone. Okay, okay, sir. So you will find yes, that uh, I am appearing more clearly. Okay. Uh, on the contrary, usually a person appears clear in the beginning and becomes dull. Okay. When you keep on seeing the screen, now for the opposite, we look clear in the end because we have got clarity for life. Okay. So that should be the spirit. Exactly. Clinicians don't feel that I didn't know all these things so many years. Realize one thing that at least now I came to know. Okay. Right. So that is important. Right? Yes, sir. So Bye, sir. Thank you. To all of you and also to Ritma. Yes, to sir. Keep us inspiring and taking more webinars for all of you. Especially our case webinars will demonstrate the depth of how you can individualize to every patient. Okay? And uh, whenever she does any course, same time she applies it on the patient and then she comes with the case study. Before we conduct the last session of the course, she comes with the case study. Okay? So that is the, the kind of an example to show that as a clinician, the sincerity to practice. Students can practice on each other. But clinician can practice only on patients. Every patient is a textbook.
right so see you all bye bye hare krishna yes my lady I think batchmates are looking at each other. They are like, "Oh, Darshana, Darshana, and Ritu Ma'am will be looking at each other and laughing during my demonstrations." Okay. Right. So, Darshana is our general secretary of the academy, and Ritu Ma'am is our executive admin. Okay. Both of them have done all the courses of the academy. Okay. All the two thousand five hundred hours in the history of COVID, they both have done. Okay. If I die tomorrow, they have all the videos of here. Okay. So. Right. Don't sleep so like this, all. sir. Bye bye. No truth. We'll live hundred That... more years to teach so many students. No, it's like you my videos can teach hundred years of learning. Okay. Uh, we are not also, teaching for two thousand two hundred. We are not uh, allowing you to go anywhere. You have to live on this earth because there is no, so many students. I'm telling you that. Okay. So <laughs> see you all. If, if you say fire, it will not burn the tongue. Okay. Point is, reality is reality, and we should be prepared for it. We take courses which are reality-based courses. That is, not like a imaginary easy cases, and then we take the workshop. All our courses, master classes, are extremes patients with sleep disturbances. How to treat sports uh, injuries? People who do not have sleep disturbances. and every special test how to identify and treat so that is spectrum that is what we teach right see you bye bye remember one who loves life loves death also both are life only one is life before death life after death so don't be afraid of death because death is something which keeps you together with god why you have to be afraid of god only if you have done sin in your life you will be afraid of god understood you have done the best thing in your life means you know that god is welcoming you waiting to receive you with a lot of uh, the best pleasures of the divinity so you should be more excited actually because you have done a fulfilled life you have done the best for others so don't ever be afraid of death if somebody is dying also your loved one realize that they are reaching god why you are sad because you are here and they went to god selfishness but remember that they should be happy if they are good people they will be happy and uh, life is like this only you have already taken the jump you are anyway going to hit the floor and you are going to die everybody is going to die but smile when you are dying i will say i will have the best beautiful smile when i am dying i will welcome death with such a beautiful smile that the death will become afraid of me are you your this fellow is smiling and that makes my dead body to be handsome because i was smiling not like ah, and then i died okay so people have to tie my jaw you know correct all these things so remember so that people will take selfie with my dead body also so there has to be a way to live life and all there has to be a way to approach death also there is absolutely there is nothing if people miss we miss you sir we miss you sir means do the work what that sir was doing ten people does the work that sir soul will be in peace don't, don't tell rest in peace rest in peace rip 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 tell that what that person was doing do that for the society that will make the person to rest in peace so hbd rip and all these things na it's not going to do anything so birthday is not an achievement birthday is a process your parents are responsible you just came into the world what is there to celebrate you have to celebrate when when you have died others will celebrate your birthday don't celebrate your birthdays celebrate every day when you start the day feel like you are born that day that same energy and enthusiasm feel that fresh brain feel the fresh uh, smile 
that is every day should be your birthday not just i am telling my mind for example uh, some date is there i will not tell because it is coming up in august but uh, uh, so much gets spammed with all this whatsapp and facebook fully people are telling like hpd 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 okay i am like you i don't know why, why i am born this date like that i feel point is the dates also keep changing you think that particular date today this is not the same date next year we are only approximating every year as 365 and 1/4th of the day that is solar calendar lunar calendar is totally different so don't go by the date to celebrate celebrate and make the date wedding anniversary for example men always forget the women will catch why are you not remembering the wedding anniversary okay the man can always answer that i celebrate every day of our togetherness it's not just the anniversary it's a daily anniversary for us that is the only excuse they can give but remember that genuinely you live make sure that others are becoming better and you have a fulfillment that yes my life i have done something right same like how names can be same there can be another ritu sani but whether that ritu sani will become our ritu ma'am no so don't go by the diagnosis frozen shoulder frozen shoulder both are same no the inner nature of that dysfunctions will be different so evaluation is important okay behaving with that person will make you to know the nature how that person is just because one guy is named as sharukh khan he does not become srk nobody can become srk even five centuries are passed also no indian can match the level of srk so same like that and i always tell the example of this amitabh bachchan he was rejected by so many people for his voice but now for his voice after 80 years also 80 uh, crores of people in india all the girls will be crazy to listen to amitabh bachchan's voice even now he is 80 years some people we are all crazy about diamonds we want to get diamond we want to buy the diamond we want to have the diamond remember if a monkey is having the diamonds monkey bandar having diamonds people will think that it is only a glass crystal not a diamond but the same glass crystal is held by in amita pachan's hand nobody will tell that it is a glass crystal they will always tell it is a diamond so it's not the crystal that you hold gives the value it is what you are gives the value to the crystal so you as a physical therapist if you are the best your techniques automatically will get the value don't run behind the techniques holding a diamond do not make you rich your willingness to serve the poor makes you wealthy you might have i might have 10000 rupees but i am hardly giving 1 rupee also to others i am not rich but i am having 10 rupees and i am giving that 9 rupees to others i am rich because greatness is not in having it is only in giving you give more to the people you become great remember about that amitabh bachchan because even now if he comes for the count padega karapati every one of us looks at him with anticipation that this big b so that is the life which you have to live amidst all the struggles the positivity the trust in god trust in your own self and doing good for everybody around and seeing the best of yourself through betterment of others I am a vessel. I should give milk to others. If I pray God that allow me to give the milk to everyone, automatically the vessel will be filled. 
but if you pray god like give me milk give me milk give me milk that thing will be filled because you become a beggar give me this give me that give me that but if you ask god like allow me to teach it, one lakh people automatically you will learn that amount of knowledge to teach that one lakh people when you are opening a book have that responsibility that it is going to make a better world through me don't think that i am going to pass the exam i am going to uh, uh, teachers are going to appreciate me parents will appreciate me they will buy me a bike so i have to read this book nothing will happen that is the difference there everybody would have experienced this in different dimensions those who are sincere will always understand the meaning behind what i am talking right so great to have the clinicians like dr deepthi dr shahid shoaib akin pelu joshua jyoti shweta and all students it's good to have because they are the future of physiotherapy profession we need future physios to know the right direction then only the future of physiotherapy becomes the best okay so see you all bye bye i am i'm telling the bye bye for the fourth time pardon me okay so we'll close the session <laughs> okay yes ritu ma'am well, same like you only okay ritu ma'am also will tell bye 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 and she'll keep on talking so end the